sea cucumber. Low down? How do I say it? Loudon? I don't know. I was saying Loudon sea mount. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. There was one the day that we saw the sea dandelion and the Dumbo octopus. It was a big day, I think. Yeah. Our nice. sea dandelion didn't make the cut. They, wow. they, used, they used the previous watches once they saw. Stinkers. It's rigged. <laughs> it should have been a montage. I mean, I'm just saying. I agree. Oh, okay. It is. It's it's the one of the of the Holothurian being all like crazy. The headless chicken monster and like one of the pop purple Holothurians like waving around. Is that a tuna kit right there? No, no. Never mind. It's an anemone. Anemone. It looked like it was on a stem. So, question: Do we ever see any albino sea creatures like? Versions that just don't have pigment to them. Oh, I feel like the answer is yes, but I don't remember. Yeah, I can't think of one. All these broken pillows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're back yeah. in a whole new realm again. Centering up there on the Ralph Nav screen, please. Ooh, bottom Keep right. Moving. Oh, that's uh, a centering up on that guy. Yep. Another wall. Tyrion. This is Nav. Another move. Same step. Beautiful. Is the porch light still on? Yes. G Jess, do you want to turn that off? Yeah. Some of these wall are really Better? tall. Uh oh, we got something so. coming up. Okay. What's okay. going on? What do we got? Drop. Oh, Calyptrophora. That is huge. Primnoid. And stylish. It and is. a crab? <laughs> and stylish. Yeah, munid, 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 dopsis, munid. That looks like something that somebody would wear as a hat. Can I, I was do a partial zoom on this guy, please? Like to the That's Kentucky great. Derby? Yeah. <laughs> I was just like with say the mint julep. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that it doesn't just have like one plane. Like it's yeah, it's yeah. Like almost spiraling around to catch currents yeah. from different directions. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't think we've seen. Pull wide, please. This many directions from one of these that it's branched out in. The way I'm thinking about the lighting is that, well, maybe not in this particular yeah. camera position, but when we're um, cruising, it looks kind of good to have a little bit of a range. And then um, when we're trying to look at something, you know, it's easier to adjust the iris when it's when it's pretty flat lighting. Okay. Um, I don't know what's functional for you or anything, but. Oh, this is fine. Yeah, let me know if you like want it on or off at any point there, Rhett. Sure. You're the you're the video expert, I see. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds great. I think you're right, it looks less washed out now. So we are currently exploring one of the largest protected areas in the planet and what's it called papa namoko camry national monument very nice <laughs> 1 a.m quiz but it's like when the when you know the answer right and you're like they can't he wouldn't quiz us on something yeah, they he wouldn't knows we know <laughs> just knows the answer to this <laughs> it's on his shirt yeah. Hey, how do we get a shirt, by the way? <laughs> you should open it up again for all of us to buy. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll ask if I if they'll do that. We're, you gotta, we you gotta say we don't Papa have, Yeah, we don't <laughs> we don't, we don't have like the organizational swag kind of stuff. So um, we have to do it through the nonprofit uh, National Marine Sanctuary Foundation oh, through Bonfire sure. Funds. So I will ask if they would okay. be willing to open it up again. After last cruise, cool. they opened it up, and we we had to get like a minimum of was it forty or something? I don't yeah, remember how we had there to get a, a certain number, number but we of people. It. We all got, got it. it. We got it. Uh, That's how I have my little collection. Good. There's another fish hiding in the boulder. Do you guys yeah. want to look at that? Mm. We have a little sure. time, real quick. But those are usually announced on our Instagram and Facebook. Oh, so I need to for our general moment. audience, if you like Papahanaumokuakea, Marine National Monument, keep in the loop. 
Ooh. Sorry for your eyeballs there, sir. You're an interesting eel like fish. Look at those tiny beady eyes. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, they saw. Oh wait, one no, of they're these. not. No, no, no. The black, black is the eyes. The uh, four to eight watch saw one of these. I saw really? down in the lounge, but I did not hear what they I did it as. We got this. Oh, hello. Very catfish-like. Yeah, yeah. It's got, it's got those little I bars. Kind of whiskers underneath. Yeah. All right. It's got to be very helpful in the dark for navigating around. Oh, away, please. Definitely. Interesting branching on his whiskers, too. It looks like another ophidid. Keep moving. Yes, please, this is Nav. Another move. Same step, please. Oh, that does look like it, doesn't it? Right? Yeah. Just one of these ophidids again? I think you got it. And there's oh, even yeah, those the little eye spots on it. Yeah. yeah. It's about time to start shopping for a rock. Reg, do you Which want point? it at the waypoint or do you want it along the slope? Um, we'll get it close to the waypoint. I'm uh, kind of keeping an eye out for textures. Okay, roger that. <laughs> Raj. <laughs> I can't tell if these are maybe small paragorgia. Maybe next time we see a dark pink fan, could we fan, um, zoom on it? We have a hot second here. Cool. Okay. Oh, cool. nice. Yeah, I was guessing paragorgia, but it's. I couldn't tell. I think maybe one of these just has the polyp out and the other didn't. Is that a fish, like on the bottom right? Bottom right, bottom right. I can't tell. Yeah. All right. Who are you? Who, 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 who? <laughs> okay, I was thinking the same thing there. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and fish on it, maybe, please. And Kylie, on to turn on that porch light. Porch yeah, got it. that's Paragorgia. Yeah. It's nobbly. I it's love so the color on it. It's so small compared to the big, big ones we've seen. Yeah. And it's just got this really satisfying color to it. Yeah. So bold. Yep. It's just like, I'm saturated. I'm here. So beautiful. Thank you. Oh, I please. Those They're really cool. All are just so They're cool, thriving all these here. horizontally yeah. growing ones. Yeah, I feel like we've seen a lot of them on these dives that are just kind of like dead. <laughs> these have been living. <laughs> yeah, nice. no, these, these look happy here. <laughs> I love them. What They're is cool. that white shell or, or, oh, it's probably a ribbon sponge. It look, yeah, it looks like spongy. Do you want to look at it still? Uh, sure, Qu quick snap. Yeah, just do a quick look at it. Yeah, I think we're just coming on it at a weird angle. Yeah, for a Could second I was like, is that a big brachiopod? Like, no. what? Yeah. Oh, look at the rim. Yeah. Fuzzy. Thank you. Pull away, please. Val, do you see anything different about the rocks here than when we started an hour ago? Mm. Yeah, stuff that we can actually sample. Um, so we're, we're going up a uh, tallest pile yes, right now. Bridge, this is now another move, same step. So this is stuff that's uh, sort of been collapsing, breaking apart, piling up from some outcrops further up uh, on this feature that we're climbing. And uh, yeah, this stuff is uh, also a mixture of heavily manganese crusted stuff by the looks of it and some more angular stuff. So we're uh, getting a mix of uh, Raj, thank you. Uh, probably some Roger that, marginally thanks. more recent collapse events or wasting, maybe not collapse events, maybe just regular old uh, things falling apart and piling up. So uh, well, what yeah, everything else is pretty in place further down section. What are some of the f environmental factors that cause these rocks to fall apart? Uh, I know on the surface we got like freezing and thawing and you know like sunlight heating things up and expanding and contracting and 
air and like none of those things are are down here so what's what's breaking them up and what's moving them um that's a good question um we I mean, we're coming up a pretty steep feature here, like some sort of a, uh, you know, part of a ridge that's fault bounded or uh, maybe some sort of a uh, parasitic, like late stage volcano on the ridge. Um, I have no idea which. Um, just looking at the maps, uh, we, you know, we can have to ground truth that more to understand uh, uh, the controls on the bathymetry that we're seeing. But um, if there's like an unstable slope or there's uh, something about how the lava's cooled that makes them more prone to breaking when they're uh, uh, you know in steeper environments like this uh, where you know gravity can do more of its thing um, that can be some potential controls so it might be uh, like rock properties it might be uh, uh, like subsidence history uh, uh, of this this volcano it could be it could be a few things so I, I'm just not really sure which so good question are there ever like small plate movement related earthquakes or anything like that yeah I that's uh, uh we, we see that as a fairly common thing around uh the hawaiian islands where uh, especially near big island where um uh the plate flexure from uh uplift generated by uh, a buoyant mantle plume underneath the uh, the islands and then just like the sheer weight of the um, of the islands and, like the volcanic platforms themselves kind of pushing back down so it's up and down and it causes the plate to flex um, a few of those. all around it and uh, yeah you get like tectonic earthquakes like that and it's entirely possible that um, while the seamount was active and after it was active it may have seen some similar kind of um, flexure and like uh, yeah, changes in, in like plate bending and curvature and stuff as well. And that, uh, those are usually not like huge quakes or anything, but you know, maybe, maybe over time that changed the angle of a few things and changed how, you know, uh, some of the minor like slope wasting, uh, happened. Hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm speculating, but maybe. that could be one kind of mechanism maybe. Thanks. Yeah. There's, we still have a lot to learn about the underwater features and like uh, the structural controls on the submarine features these volcanoes do. You know, there's uh, a lot we don't know. But this could have been part of the, uh, you know, related to some of the processes Ooh, that also pink. form these uh, uh, geomorphologies too. You have to make those steep sides somehow. Some pretty wow. big fans over to the right too, Leela. Beautiful. Those bright yellow ones too. Oh yeah. Yeah, can we zoom on the bright little yellow one? Sure. All right, go ahead and push on in there, please. Oh. You gotta come a little wide there. I still can't tell if that's something overgrowing one of the white fans okay, or go if ahead it push actually is that. Please. Oh, cool. It does look a lot uh, like the white bands, doesn't it? It looks, it looks like it's... To tell. Brachiopod. Yeah. Looks like it's all connected tissue. Okay, uh, let's try that one more time. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Rather than like an overgrowth of zoanthids or anything. Looks like Asako's going to help us out a little bit. Sorry for the shot. Do you guys want another tried it. She's saying anilopsomia. I think that's okay. I think we're good. All right, Raj. We were seeing some of those neon anilopsomia the other day. Move, same step. Okay. Um, after this move, Suleiman, would it be all right if we uh, paused and look for a Beth rock? Yeah, sure. let's do it. Oh, wow. We got another one of these gigantic. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, we're running into more life. Can I see the dive plan real quick? Yeah. Here you go. Thank you. You answering that, Justin? I'm going to yeah. come up more okay. than I yeah. would. Roger 700 that. 100 meters. Yeah, we're getting pretty shallow. Yeah, so yeah, we're pushing to get, uh, get up on top of this thing. So... Yeah, 700 meters are bust, <laughs> right? Nah. 
Mm -hmm. We'll still get as far as we can get. Approach to the says nav, hold position. Thank you. So our next waypoint is at the top of this sort of local summit. Looks like the They're waypoint uh, after that is in the saddle between that and the next higher summit that we'll go to on this ridge. So we may, we'll probably be dropping down a little bit after we get to this waypoint and then back up again. For those of you just joining us, we are uh, diving with two ROVs, Atalanta and Hercules, on the King George Seamount, working our way up the northern ridge. There's a big heavy corallium. Yeah. Can we zoom is on it, that real quick? Is it on a sponge? Or no, it's just it's old past. Oh, on the stock? It almost looks like it. Yeah. Yeah, could we do a quick zoom on that? Yeah, do sure thing. Okay. Go ahead and start your push. Ooh, you don't think that's Paragorgia? I don't know. It does look like Paragorgia, okay. actually. It does look yeah, like it's on an old stock, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it, it is. is. It's totally on That's an old cool. stock. Mm. Huh. Strange. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's like cement. Okay, I think we're going to find some good rocks in this area. So, um, yeah, whenever, whenever you guys are uh, maybe ready to sit down and look for a sample front row, just uh, give us a shout. Okay, well, the ship is stopped. I I needed to make up some ground, so actually that might work out well if you guys are interested in a rock in about one minute. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I love these Walteria. They really are big compared to what I've yeah. seen on other dives. This one decided to go straight up as opposed to horizontal like all those others. Yeah, so based on our previous dives, we're starting to see denser communities uh, at much shallower depths here. It was not something we were expecting. Just pointing out, no need to deep look, but there's another fish. Sure thing. It has that halosaur look to it from a far off distance. It looks like we had an oxygen low at around 22 uh, micromoles per liter really recently, and now it's just trending up. So we're probably about in the oxygen minimum zone on yeah. this waypoint. Uh, yeah, Beth. Uh, I've had it nailed. And we yeah. get this explosion of life at that point. Which right? Is like, as so we weird. got to the oxygen minimum zone, there's all kinds of stuff going on suddenly. Yeah. So, yeah, that's where my ge geochemist brain kicks in, and I'm thinking, okay, is it the oxygen minimum, or is it the nutrient density in the water? And what other factors am I completely not thinking about? <laughs> yeah, they still got to digest all that. What's on the yeah. rock? It's crinoid. Never mind. Crinoid on a fan. I'm just like, what rock? <laughs> <laughs> on that one rock, the one. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're pretty close to the waypoint. This is a, they're settling out nicely. Uh, yeah. So ideally, this is around the area where we would. Yeah, I'm thinking over here, there's uh, quite a bit of loose stuff. Okay. We can see if uh, we find the, uh, the textures we are looking for. Sure thing. Maybe the droids too. Yes, I did. You were the only one who laughed. What was that? I missed it. What'd you say? <laughs> These are not the droids you're looking for. I laughed on that. I was on mute while I was laughing. Sorry, but I... No, that's okay. I, I'm, I, I will make lame jokes no matter what. No, it's a great joke. I, I got the joke. I was just uh, otherwise I was, I was on mute too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were all muted. <laughs> Actually, it looks pretty consolidated there. Uh, this is a little steeper than it than it originally looked. Sorry about that. Oh, you're fine. I'm just trying to find you guys. I think that looked more consolidated, but this down here might yeah. be better. Let's try over here. Okay, I think I'm seeing some uh, candidates. Like I think under the lasers, some of these might be pretty good. Okay. That that one's gonna be big. 
Um, that one looks pretty good. That one's under things, but it looks interesting. So maybe not our prime target. Yeah, I think I like this one. Sure thing. Cool. Yeah. Actually, I think a lot of these look pretty good. Very botryoidal. Yeah. These all look great, honestly. Right, sorry. Is really that a little stuff. anemone Fingers up there? crossed this is easier than our first attempt. Or something. Doesn't look like a rock. That was uh, some hunting and poking we had to do 12 hours ago. Eight hours ago? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna get you a better Hi. spot. But right, we had rock water. This will be good. Can you tell us straight one more time? Um, I lost it in my sights. Which one was it again? <laughs> yeah, see. Oh, they all look so great. Yeah, we kind you of were kind of litter. pointing over here before, I think. I think it's the one on the left laser is the one you were talking about before. Oh. I bet. Um, yeah, I think I think so, but really, all of these look pretty good. Okay, I'm going to reach for one, and then you say hot or cold, yeah? Okay. Raj. I like this game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what about that one or this one? The one that's... Um, Try the one on the lasers. That one? What yeah, we can take, we can take a look at one. this one, but I do also like the other one you pointed at. Okay, Raj. <laughs> So we are at 1,171 meters at the moment. Fifty-eight micromoles per liter of ox oxygen concentration. No. Oops. It just nope. dropped. It just updated. Sorry. Twenty-three. <laughs> I was like, that looks a little high. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I thought we were low. Sorry, that was a little more wedged in there than I five thought. 5.5% and 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 oxygen saturation. It looks like it's unwedged now. Yeah, it looks great. Okay, Raj. I'm but it's a toasty 3.31 degrees Celsius. Yeah. I can still have it. The googly eye is like watching the whole thing. Come here. It's there to give you stage fright. It's kind of giving me stage fright. <laughs> now you made me nervous. <laughs> I <Sorry>. never did. <laughs> I never did hear what Paul had to say about it. Yeah, no, that wasn't ideal. Uh, Ooh, this one's, a, I, I think questions. I'm liking this one a lot. See that orange? Okay. Hold it there. Does it have any botryoids on it? I think it does. Video like zoom? little centimeter size ones. Ooh, yeah. yeah it does. That's, very that's a good rock right there. It's yeah, hard to like tell what size it is. Uh, I'm sure it's great. I just can't estimate what it is. Wow, you are just. Barely oh, holding, oh, it, oh, holding oh, it. Maybe we your... should readjust your grip. Okay. Yeah. Where oh. should I put it on the porch? And you can just put it on that. Uh, come pull wide. Let's get there. Put it on the big rock. Yeah, just like re-stab at it. Like don't let go of it all the way. Kind of oh. loosen your grip. And That's stab at it. Terrifying, Raj. So re-index yourself as needed for that move. Oh, Raj. I don't know, that was another one of those waves. Oh, better. so beautiful. That wow. was just, that was just so elegant. So elegant. Oh, I could even get it better, but that's all right. <laughs> no, that, that looks good. Uh, okay. The grip force has got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So where is this um, one? Starboard. Okay. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Oh, it's for Beth, right? So it's uh, yeah, so this is uh, it's front the Omega. Omega, yeah. Reg. Roger. Correction. Um, yeah, it's about 15 centimeters. Yeah, that's what I put in there. It's a good size. It is an excellent size. All right, I am full racked back here. Roger. We just missed a really good opportunity to oh. tell Kylie to use Lost the force. Tool. Choose the what? Use the force. Use the full force. I think it should be okay. Um, you got a level nice. Do you want me to look up at your wrist a bit? I think. No, I, I think I, I think I, I think I got it. Raj. Nice. Get it a little bit more in the bucket there. That's good. Nice. Yes. 
So this rock is a sample for Beth Orcutt, who is our other co-lead scientist. And you guys will want a water sample, I'm imagining. Uh, yes. yes, please. How do we know? <laughs> I think we've Let's done this before. <laughs> see. Uh -huh. Sediment looks number much easier to be number two. Um, so you guys are okay with the amount of sediment that's going by the Niskins right now? Uh, did we want to jump up Maybe a little bit? Maybe just lift slightly off? Yep. Sure okay. It looks like it's not as badly behaved as our, our one earlier. Right. Uh, so. Okay. I'm going to pop off. So landed, it was two meters altitude and back, so I'll go to like three and a half. That'll be about one and a half meters okay. off the front. And maybe yeah. I'll go a little bit to the wall, to the right. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So right now we're taking a water sample, pulling this little loop here. We'll close a Niskin bottle, trapping some water from this location inside it for analysis later. All right. Is that good with you guys? We're about two meters off the front now, two and a half. Looks good. All right. Roger. Try rotating your wrist a little bit there. Yeah. And then spaghetti rotate. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Put these so close together. <laughs> they just want to be friends. Noise. Like, forget the, the claw thing. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> Yoinks. Hey, that worked. That was perfect. I should just do that more often. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the fake trying to hook it thing. <laughs> the only thing is that with you these coral cutters, we don't want to stab it. Yeah, I know. We're about three meters off the deck for that. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. All right. Keep so, head, do you guys want us to head up to waypoint six and then back down the hill to waypoint seven? Uh, or do we want to hit? I think I think maybe if we continue due south and uh, we'll, just we'll kind of scoot along a contour there. Did you want, mean here or? Yeah, we'll pass by six and then seven. Mm. Sounds. How's the current up here? It's, it's not too bad. OK. Um, not too bad. I don't know if we have to hit waypoint six directly, but if we just kind of skirt around it and then start heading down. I think that would be... Which direction you want to go? Uh, 180? Yeah, let's go 180. Actually, yeah, we are going to pass pretty close over it, aren't we? Yeah, 180 is fine. Okay. 180, Raj. Let's Roger. do it. We can go in 50 meters uh, step. Okay. As it seems... Yeah, kind it's of flattening uh, out. Shall we? Yeah, let's do yeah. it. I'm going to do a gauge Bridge, check. this is now. Roger that. 50 meter south. That little contour line at the next waypoint. It's a very interesting shape compared to the rest of the contour lines around. I wonder if there's some weird rock feature or something up there. It's still point three, is that correct? There's still one. Sorry? Still point three. Yes, we are. Great. Sounds Thank good. You. Um, so it sounds like we have to make up some considerable ground, so would you mind zooming out on high pack again for... Yeah, I was about to ask the same. Yeah, so how do we want to navigate the uh, descent? Would you like all the way up? Yeah, just to see the whole Oh, map. 11, 12, oh, we, we got mad waypoints. Yeah. 
Uh, and so we're pulling the dive at 11. Yes. So that means that there'll be seven hours after our watch that they're going to have bottom time. Um, that distance so we've got like is nine -ish hours. I think if we reach eight uh, by the end of our watch, we are doing fine. Okay. Okay. That's pretty attainable. Um, yes. Seems pretty close. Yeah. Because the total we have covered already now, three th three thousand ish meters. Okay. And left is two thousand ish. Okay. Raj. Yeah, because we're really interested in seeing what's. Uh, on that steep wall leading up to Over here. Uh, the top of the table yeah. mount. Yeah. So, but we'll still do this up, down, up, down? Um, if we, yeah, if we can. Okay. I don't I don't Let's know what do the it. ideal maneuver would be for uh, the descent. For ROV? Yeah. Yeah, if we're going down slope, we can go 0.3 down slope is fine. Uh, okay. If you guys want to go there faster, if you want 0.5, we can pull off the slope, lose visual contact, but we can get to that to the little saddle there a bit faster. So it really just depends on what you want. But if you want to have visual contact, 0.3 down slope is fine. Um, yeah, how about we reassess uh, once we're past waypoint six and we're looking down a little bit. Okay. Because yeah. if there's not much to see, I would suggest we just kind of book through that. Okay, yeah, okay. Right. See what there is to see. Yeah. That sediment looks like a giant white sea star. I know. There was a sponge a little bit ago, and I was like, sea star. Thank you. Me too. If we see another one of those really bright red sea stars, I'm looking for one of a picture of one of those. For okay. My yeah, we can. See what we can do about that. The percentage thinner ones, those um, percentage stars. I'm not or? sure. They're like they're like very vibrant red. And we've seen a few of them, but we've always those super long armed past. ones. No. Oh no. No, just kind of more like biscuity. No, not biscuity, <laughs> but not super long armed. Like okay. The red, not not that red they orange, were, yeah, but red. Red. Like and not one of the. On the purpley end of red. I not think. one of the bumpy ones. Um, I think we have shots of, of those, right? Uh, I mean, I'll take anything I can get. If we can get a better picture than what we already have, that'd be great too, but. Uh, I could check. Was it the sort of morphology or mm, shorter? Yeah, and there's a five, I think it was a five pointed star. Seen, seen them just laying flat on the ground, not climbing up anything. Is this the general shape? Uh, Generally, yeah. Maybe like that, yeah. Something like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've definitely seen some like this, I think. Yeah, I think we saw one today, but we were playing catch up, so we didn't get to stop. Okay. Hello to Ms. Milligan and her students, if they're all, if they're all in, yeah. Falmouth, 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 Massachusetts? Falmouth, Massachusetts. Oh, hello. Hello from, I'm from Fall River, Massachusetts, so Falmouth feels like Super a hop, deeper. skip, and a jump away. Cheryl was a grad student when I was an undergrad, and uh, I did some work on uh, crab substrate preference to help her out with her uh, thesis that she was working on. And then uh, I learned a very valuable lesson about controlling variables. Oh, uh, yes? I was in this refrigerated room with uh, putting crabs into uh, 
a tank that was like half shells and half sand or half seaweed and half sand and like and I was just watching it to see which substrate it preferred and after I had collected hours and hours and hours of data Cheryl came in and said you have to start over and I said what and it's because there was a window to one no. side of my tank and I had not controlled for light as a variable oh no and all of my data was no good photo taxes but I have been able to use that example with my students for the last 24 years and it helps them remember uh, to control their variables in their experiments mm -hmm. which has been good What is this right here? Oh, never mind. Well, look like a crab. Too late, though, right? It looks like a crab. Crab right here. Oh, good. It's not too late. Sure enough. <laughs> look, look at that. Lith lithoidy. I think I'm going to go ahead and push in there a bit. That's uh -huh. great. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know what I'm seeing also? What? Hyaloclastite. No. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> Not just dirt? And a really spiky crab. Got any more zoom on that? <laughs> that thing is so cool. Very spiky indeed. So is this a real crab or is yeah. it a something that evolved to be a crab? It's a king crab. King crab. Okay. Everybody listens wow. to frog rock. Wait, this is a frog metal. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I stuck to my own joke. Darn it. That was pretty good. <laughs> 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 get, get you out of the blue, you know, catch you off guard. <laughs> totally. Uh, Christopher, actually, Chris Kelly actually has one, one on his wish list, but it's white. But it looks, it's the same A morphology. frog like that? A fro sorry, a, a crab like that? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, a frog frog. <laughs> I'm all stuck now. <laughs> so a big, white, spiky crab? Yep, one of those king crabs. But okay. But white. I like my crabs like I like my rocks. Angular. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there was a question about why you like angular rocks so much. Because <laughs> they're pointy. <laughs> um, so um, sort of the angular, the wedge-shaped rocks uh, that we're looking for, um, those, those are rocks that are likely pretty well preserved uh, for uh, the age that we believe they are. And uh, probably came from a, uh, uh, a section of some sort of a pillow lava or one of the other lava flow morphologies we've been seeing, and those are really good for uh, geochemical work, sea especially star. if we find some uh, fresh mineral phases like clinopyroxene in them, yes, which please. we have in some of these. Coming up, Roger. Christopher, there's the sea star, but I think it's too pink for you, right? Uh, is the is any, any another sea star is tip. good. I'm doing a whole album. Is that a solasterid? Excellent. It is yeah. looking more and more like high level class type. It chunks. Definitely does. And we're coming up on a local. So I, yeah, this is probably like some little parasitic cone or something. Just like some late stage stuff or whatever. Or maybe even a big cone that built up on the ridge. So. Yeah, push on in here a bit. Part of an old rift vent system or something. Is that one missing a leg? It looks like it. It just looks I like it's pushed so. up just against like, I think it's pulled yeah. it up. Oh, oh no, it's folded forward. Yeah. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Good call. Yeah, any more zoom? Okay. Yeah. What is that little thing on it? Look at his. Uh, oh, this is what we were looking for. Yeah. Maybe it has see. an associate. Sorry. Stand by. It's redder than I thought. There you go. Thank you. You got the yeah. still, Lila? Yeah, I did. Right. Cool. All right, full wide, please. Thanks for that. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, so here we're seeing a little bit of a lithological change as we're uh, uh, crossing uh, this uh, little local summit where uh, Waypoint 7 is. So I'm seeing a lot of uh, 
Holy fragments God. of... Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is whoa. that over there? What is that? Was that an animal or a coral? Yeah. It's whoa. A star. It's a Brissinja, I mean, isn't they're it? both animals, I guess. And it's but absolutely enormous. Yeah, star. It's on the wrong side of the rock to get a good shot of it. Because do it. Good. I'll come down. I'll come down. Oh, no. It's that my butt's going to hit the slope pretty oh, quickly. Oh, Raj. That's a cool angle. But this is probably the best we'll get for this guy. Let's do a hop forward here. <laughs> so how do Brasingids eat? I think they're filter feeders. It's pretty big though. All right, I'm gonna keep moving. That was like hide and go seek. I know. It was very well hidden. Mm -hmm. Something in the bubble. Not in the bubble. In the so sorry. Every time you start explaining this, we I interrupt with animals. I know, right? <laughs> I lost it. It's that biology getting in the way of the rocks. Nah, okay. I'm kidding. Apparently I'm kidding. they <laughs> use those spines like Velcro and catch their food. Oh. Huh. Oh, okay. So yeah, we're, we're getting into a little bit of a lithological change as well up here. So it looks like uh, we have a mixture of eruption styles in this region where uh, we've got this big pile of hyaloclastites, but we're also still seeing a lot of uh, uh, lava fragments around here and some large sponges. Um, so yeah, it looks like uh, we've had, I don't know if it's necessarily one eruptive episode or multiple, but uh, we are seeing some complex eruption styles that did occur in this area, so this is pretty cool. So it's very interesting that the lower our oxygen concentration goes, the more life we see here. Yeah, inexplicable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is there a temperature gradient that we're going along? I mean, we're up, we're up about almost two degrees from the bottom. Um, we started out a little below two degrees Celsius, and uh, we're now 3.3. Yeah, there is often some kind of like a density change, I think, around the oxygen minimum zone, mm -hmm. and that sort of like traps food above there. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, maybe this is just like better for filter feeders than below the oxygen minimum zone. And maybe because it's cold down here, they already sort of have slow metabolisms. But I don't know. Yeah, I was about to ask if there was a salinity change, but it looks pretty constant on uh, Herc CTD. Wow, yeah. Yeah. sure is. Flatline. <laughs> right. That's <laughs> temperature. Just like, did you tell me to zoom? Oh, okay. there yeah. is a temperature gradient. Just a lot of crinoids. Yeah, they're really cute. taking it is growing on a little oh, coral, wow. a little it's a, It has a good arrangement. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's a little cheerleader of those. Totally. Or else it's doing a double lift. Yeah, we should keep an eye on temperature. That we could should. be the density determinant. Right, go ahead, come my please. Uh, what else in starboard, uh, uh, starboard bio again? Kind of thinking about spaces and kind of thinking about rocks. Okay. My friend wants a rock. We're yeah, gonna I'm get my friend a rock. So Val, uh, <laughs> does the, the reason that angular, the angular shape indicates that it's a good rock, is that because it indicates that it hasn't uh, undergone a lot of weathering? Like that might be why it's uh, in better condition or is it something completely different? Uh, that's, that's one of the factors that we are looking for, yeah. Um, it doesn't always end up being the case uh, that it's Another a pressure rock. Another step, please. But um, it it does it, it does kind of serve as an indicator that uh, we maybe we we're, we're most likely we think uh, getting something that's in uh, fairly well preserved condition. Uh, whereas with some of the uh, the uh, like crustier rocks that uh, Beth is interested in, she's she's looking for stuff that uh, seen a lot of uh, a lot of seawater, uh, which maybe a huge manganese crust uh, could be a good indicator of. And uh, yeah, she's looking for stuff uh, that is uh, that has undergone that alteration and may have uh, 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 like a microbial colony in it. Understanding how that uh, 
how that changes as a function of uh, depth, O2, things like that. So, yeah. Um, the more altered rocks are more likely to not have, I think, as angular uh, a surface because they are easier to uh, kind of break and erode. So, yeah, I, I think that's my past midnight brain is <laughs> not answering things well. I think but you yes. answered my question perfectly. Okay. I, I feel like I'm going around in circles right now, so my apologies for that. All good. I know the answer now. Cool. Mm -hmm. Val, can you explain about the crust you were referring to? Ah, yes. Um, so one thing we see on a lot of these rocks is a ferromanganese crust, and that's something that uh, tends to coat rocks uh, very that are erupted onto the seafloor or other objects that the stuff can nucleate on uh, very, very slowly. So the longer they sit on the seafloor, uh, the thicker the stuff gets, and it's like it, its growth rate is somewhere on the order of like millimeters per million years or so, if that. So, uh, yeah, the older the rocks, the thicker the crust, unless they were exposed more recently, and then the crust won't be as thick. But, um, yeah, it's a, kind of a feature of seafloor rocks. We see it out in the West Pacific. We see it in the Lao Basin. Even on some of the young rocks, it's already started nucleating. We see it here. So, yeah, it's kind of all over, all over the place. How does erosion of rocks in this area compare to erosion of rocks on land? Mm. Uh, terrestrial versus seawater alteration are different because there are different factors involved, different chemistry. Go into auto iris for a second. Yeah, sure thing. Oh, these rocks look really good right here. <laughs> Are we in a position where we might be able to stop and grab something? We can stop the ship and then just let it swing for a minute. Okay. Bridge, this is Nav. Hold position, please. Miss <laughs> Suleiman's ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I know what this means. We've been here before. Yeah. Bridge, this is Nav. Hold position, please. Thank you. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, just give us a shout when too. you're ready. Yeah, sure thing. Cool. Um, be like about two minutes for a swing. Okay. Sounds good. Um, yeah, with like, like transport mechanisms uh, for rocks in oceanic versus uh, terrestrial are a little different too. So depending on the situation, sometimes terrestrial rocks can be transported a lot further than I, than like some of the stuff we're seeing like right now. This is stuff that's only moved a short, a uh, short while, but um, I'm sure there are other places like well, in uh, collapse features where you can get longer transports in oceanic settings. So, like mechanical weathering, probably kind of similar. It's the chemical weathering that's that's going to be different. So, like stuff sitting in a saline environment for millions of years versus stuff that's subjected to like air, weather, rain. Coming out of auto. Yeah. Thanks. Oh my gosh. Yeah, there's some impressive fans. Different species too. Yeah. Very cool, yeah. I really want to know what these white fans are, if they're the analopsemia or the, was it synalactids? Sure, we can uh, take a look at a fan in a moment, if you guys want. Yeah, okay. I don't know Here that I'll be able to tell, but maybe a closer zoom would help Asako or someone else. Yeah. And uh, we'll zoom on which one would you guys like? Um, so not the prim nodes in the front, but some of the big, big stony looking fans behind. That yeah. one or okay. any of these guys. Yeah, sure thing. See if I can yeah. part. The other thing I'm really liking about some of these geology questions is it's making me uh, uh, dredge up uh, some old geology that I don't get to use as much anymore. So this is a little bit like a refresher course. It's <laughs> making you dredge up some geology. Oh. Dude, I have grown up with marine terms. I have no end to them. <laughs> and I will use them shamelessly. Yeah, I grew up on the Great, uh, spending a lot of time on the Great Lakes, and uh, I've always been like kind of into like you know the the freighters and stuff that would uh, carry ore and other you know ore package tankers stuff like that and throughout the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence Seaway system. So, all right, go ahead. And push every white fan has its there. own squatty. Have you noticed? It's like a pet. Very thick branch. Kind of 
It's kind oh, of an awkward angle. Chlorocorallium. Okay, that's the one of the things we were thinking it was the other day. Do you want to come partial wide there, please? While I swing a rest. What benefit do you think the okay, squat lobsters get again, from being on another organism? Higher up again, I guess. Mm -hmm. A little less in this situation, but a lot of times it's a bit of shelter from those crustacean-eating fish, too, I imagine. Come, come wide, please. Was that all right for you guys? Or Yeah, I think that was good. Uh, Saka says, more likely hexacorallium here. Oh, on the other dive, we saw Pleurocon. This is hexacorallium. Okay, correction. Oh, beautiful landscape. Mm -hmm. Look yeah. at all this. Very Look at cool. all this life. There's and all this out. talus. Mm -hmm. Ripe for the picking. I am looking for some of those really angular rocks that we saw on the way up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're in a good spot for rock picking. Sure looks like it. <laughs> and that too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about this pile here? Um, let's Are we going to hop up again? Yeah, let's let's hop past the the boulders coming up here. Okay. Maybe where we get the slight <laughs> upslope. I think I'm liking that. Oh, yeah, there's some stuff there, too. Okay. Okay, so right by where we're at right now or a bit behind us? Uh, I think I just saw something right here. Would it be all right to sit down? Yeah, sure thing. All right. Good spot here. I think so. I like that guy. Raj. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I had a long day. I'm tired. <laughs> You're good. Oh, all good. All good. Just going on two o'clock in the morning here. I've been up since eight a.m. Oh my gosh! You didn't take a nap? <laughs> no, I didn't have the time. I was working on the rocks. There's always time. There's always rocks. There's always <laughs> rocks. <laughs> you beat me to it, Kylie. <laughs> it was just us on your shoulders all day. <laughs> <laughs> Could you tell us straight again? I think I know what yeah. one you picked, yeah, but I just want to. Yes, right. One. That's what I thought. Okay, Raj. Right. I think that's. A, I think that's just about the perfect size. We're kind of on top of a small little marble, so oh, we're, so we're like tippy yes. a little. Okay, Roger. This is one for cool. you, Val. Yes. It, uh, last time we picked up a geology rock was about 500 meters, 500 vertical meters ago. So we're due. Porridge. It's nice we won't have to deal with all that sediment. You say Blow that now. Up. Don't jinx us. All right. <laughs> nice. Look at that Look depression at that. in there. Interesting. Come here. What is going on in the middle of that rock? I know how hollow is it. Oh, that's great. OK, Ooh. video zoom. Oh, oh that's a keeper. Small. That kind of hits your pyramidal. Oh, look at that. very interesting. It's kind of bowled out there. There's a big it? hole in the middle. Yeah. yeah. It's is it just a? It's just concave. It's not. It's, it's just a concave side. It's not. Right. It's not a hole. Okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah. There's there's lava in there. Do you like it though? It, there's plenty of rocks here. No, I like it a lot. Okay. Where does it go? Come wide. It'll go starboard into B. B as in Bravo. As in Batrioidal. <laughs> Roger. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're playing along with the uh, oh, Nautilus Bingo, Batrioidal, <laughs> Batrioidal, Batrioidal isn't on our... Uh, it's the center square. Yeah, website, so you have to count that as the center square. You know, that's the easiest rock picking we've had in a while, these last couple yeah. samples. Yeah, True no jinx it. That makes me happy. Because as much fun as it is to poke the ground, sometimes <laughs> it just takes a while to, to find something. Well, the skill to just grab something without a completely stable base is pretty impressive, too. That, too. So these rock samples will get run through a rock saw and cut like a loaf of bread. Nice.
Don't you can see the cross section. Sorry. Oh, that was perfect. That was I know, but I just I lost my balance in the in my seat. Oh, uh, right. Rocked into the box. I cut I cut my bread nice. with rock sauce. Very nice. Very nice. Coming in. Woohoo! It's very stale. Do you know yeah, I always get nervous stale, about right? like the pulling the arm out? It's like don't get excited because you could still um, punch something off. or uh, <laughs> oh, <no>. poke your eye or <laughs> it's like be. Remain controlled until the arm is stowed. Yes. That is the best the best way. Thank you. Like you're my my I've seen it once before when like you you're like all excited and then you think you're indexed and you're not and then you're like relax and you look down and you're like, Oh my god, the arm's on the ground or Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Rat. <laughs> it doesn't happen often but it that's <laughs> Put the fear of we've never lost an the craft in me. Vehicle, by the way, <laughs> just for people that know at home. <laughs> All right, so I, I actually don't know a whole lot about indexing the way you guys are doing this. What what does that help you do? Oh, so um, so if you can see, see you can't see me at all, Val, but. When I up. I get to like the limit of my motion in like a direction, I hit the middle button to index it, and then I can recenter without that moving. Ah, okay. And then I can I can continue the movement. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Thanks for that. All these in intricacies. Yeah. All right. Um. So, do we want to continue on the south, uh, yeah. southward <laughs> moving, or uh, do we want to go to eight point seven? We're pretty much at waypoint six right now. Let's continue moving south, and we'll try to get a glimpse down slope and figure out how to move from there. <laughs> sure. <laughs> we'll keep the same steps, 50 meters. 50 meters, right. Are we happy with the point three knots? Yeah, that's great. Yes. Pray this is not south, uh, 50 meters, please. Thank you. That's one of those sponges from the other day. The one that looks like a coral. Uh, yeah, what was that called again? Mm -mm -mm, something with an S, I think. Sclero, Sclero. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and look, here. I don't remember. Is that another one on top of the rock, or is that a coral? Area, <laughs> well, maybe it's a coral, coral actually. Yeah, it's a coral. Yeah. Can I do a partial zoom on this community up here? That'd be great. Sure, that's cool. That was it. Let's do it. There's a sea star. It is an interesting sea star. Oh, yeah. It's got like white arms. Yeah, we've seen a couple of those this dive. Maybe we could okay. zoom on one if we have a second. Where do you see it? To uh, the, left. the left. Has a nice coloration. Yeah, yeah, it does. I'm hoping to get one that's missing a, on? an it's arm really or growing an arm back for the slideshow. It's, just iris. it's dark because I've got a because uh, we were looking at the white corals. Yeah, yeah, totally. White sea star. Sorry, guys. Oh, it's red. Seeing. Right there, to the left of the lasers. Ah, uh, Reg. I don't have terribly good tether for getting over there, but we'll try to make do. Are you full wide on uh, Herc there? Let me check. Wow, nope. There's a few different stars floating around here. Do you still think this looks like Hyloclastite rubble? Kind of, yeah. A lot of other rubble. So it looks like uh, the smaller, smaller grain size stuff is kind of a mix of things. All right, go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. Oh. Gonna rock back up there real quick. Zoroaster. All right, away, please. Perched on the back. It's not a fun feeling.
diversity that we've seen from seamount to seamount and like the dominant species has been different almost every single time. It blows my mind. Yeah, and this is, I mean, we've even been to this one before and it looks different over here than it mm -hmm. did on the other side. So we are following a path that our lead scientist and navigator and expedition leader have mapped out, moving from waypoint to waypoint. Huh. I don't know yet. Sorry? Uh, I'm just hawing at this, uh, Pile. Yeah. Ah, yeah. So should I not call it a pillow? Uh, some sort of pile of lava flows. There are there are pillow structures in this. Yeah. This is the the weird uh, strip that we see on the. Yeah. Um, wow. What a view. Yeah. It's like the Lion King when they come up on the rock, high rock. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Yep. I was the like hearing the song here. in my head. <laughs> I was about to start humming it. All of it. this will be yours. <laughs> Everything Except the light the touches light. will be yours. <laughs> Nothing <Exactly>. touches. <laughs> <light. laughs> <laughs> it's not as inspiring. <laughs> this is the first time probably light has ever touched this. <laughs> they, so it needs a s somewhat of a rewrite for the situation. Totally. Perhaps. For sure. We'll figure it out. Everything these LEDs touch will be yours. <laughs> <laughs> cool. It is crazy to think that, I mean, it's obvious, but not only is this the first time that humans have seen this but it's the first time that like this is probably the brightest light that's ever been in this spot mm. yeah probably oh yeah certainly i imagine so like in like in ever billions of years yeah like since the ocean existed <laughs> that's a cool thought yeah yeah even the oceanic crust that uh this volcano is sitting on hasn't really seen any light yeah. This stuff erupts pretty deep. Like, I, I imagine that the light from the lava itself was probably the last time anything even comparable was, was visible here. Yeah. And there was really no life cool to witness it, probably. A big crab. That is big crab, Raj. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If there was, it was probably unhappy. <laughs> it's another one of those uh, frog rock crabs. So yeah, it looks like another king crab. <laughs> <laughs> it's really big. Wow. It's a big Larry. Wow, that thing is That's huge. Cool. Ten centimeters across that carapace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, let's see if we can get a cool shot of him. Ooh, it has some right. funky looking antenna. You want to go ahead and start it as slow as in there? Keep moving. Yes, please. Great, this is now another move, same step. Look at point. you nice. go. Wow. Oh my gosh. Make it slow. It way. looks like it's working so hard. It's so spiky. So, do the spikes yeah. imply predation? Mm. Or maybe territorial? Ooh, the oh, truth. They kind of look defensive. Yeah, nope. I wouldn't want to get anywhere near that thing. No, nope. That doesn't look very tasty to me. <laughs> it also looks a little bit like coral branches. Like it the one does. that's camouflaged. Oh, too. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. It definitely is coral colored. Okay, he can exit the screen and then uh, very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Cinematically, yeah, in right. the scene. We're just waiting <laughs> for you to cinematically exit the screen. <laughs> He's walking really quickly <laughs> now. <laughs> He's walking even faster now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boy. Okay. <laughs> Are you uh, 
I hit the I hit the other part of the rock. I was like, well, that's as far as I'm gonna walk. I think that was great. That was really good. That was awesome. It was very that was a big too. enemy. Yeah. Could you imagine opening up a bio box with one of those crabs no. inside? <laughs> no, thank I'd you. I'd kind of nope yeah. on out of there. Uh. <laughs> Lily, you got some stills of that. Crab, I did. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Those will be good social media fodder, I think. Those are cool. Would that be a uh, spoon retrieval? Spoon retrieval? <laughs> I don't think I got it. Those red sea stars that you were looking for the past a couple. Uh, yeah. We have a spoon in the Ooh. lab. Oh, there's a, like there's sponges. a Tina Four. I swear to God, there was a Tina Four in the Atalanta camera. I believe you. It's we got it on still cam a little bit. Oh, nice. <laughs> I love Tina Fours. Tina Tina Four loves you too. Oh, there's another one of those super spiky. Uh, uh, yeah, the long version of the urchin. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And a little ear behind us. Yeah. This is a different different one. That squat lobster has no friend. Yeah. <laughs> it's all on its own. Poor baby. Did you want to see the urchin? Yeah. Yeah, let's take one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but no. Yeah, yeah no, even no, we did. did no. I was just still thinking <laughs> about one. Push out of there, please. Kind of squat lobster. I, I think processing leg in the back row is still pretty high. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> still needs to reboot us. <laughs> Red. I go ahead and give a wide, please. But yeah, we uh, uh, we have a lab spoon for like getting sponges oh, and stuff out spoon. of the bio boxes, and it's pretty big. Oh, we've got a big spoon, like a dinner serving spoon. You wanna go oh, ahead and yeah. push on in here slow, and I'll get this by the squat lobster. Yes, but don't worry, it is a dedicated lab spoon. <laughs> it, it is not a food spoon. That it's just like holding out his arm. <laughs> we have a de dedicated tea kettle for engineering. Nice. Yeah, me too. Full oh, wide, please. Like, is it for food use... or for engineering? No, it is for, for engineering. engineering, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's like... The tea kettle of engineering. Oh. Our scientist ashore team continues to grow as the morning progresses. Good Do morning, science ashore. Dr. Hey, Christopher morning, Kelly Chris. has joined us. Sako's hanging in there. I'm not sure how late it is for you. Uh, I think she just had dinner a little bit ago. So still a little yeah. evening left. And then we have... Jeremy Horowitz, Dr. Horowitz as well, I believe, still. Lithides longaspina was that spiky crab. Sweet. I, I put lithides. that correctly. I put lithides, but not longaspina. Beautiful. Well, another big guy. Hmm. Brazingid? Bazing yes. Bazinga. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's how I say it. Oh, there like, are a bunch of there's a bunch of Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the background. I have a question for Suleiman. Um, when the navigator calls hold when the ship is still on the move and then calls another move, does the previous move get canceled out or does it add do on? Do you do a partial zoom here, please? No, it add on. Not add on? It, no, it does. Oh, it does? Yes. It to does our old add. move? Such a vibrant old color. Move. So if we say, like, go 30 meters in yes. this direction and, and then we hold the ship... Okay. A couple of steps like into it. So if you hold the ship, then everything will be cancelled. Every, right, okay. okay. But if you add a move to a move, then it will carry on with the last move, then we'll presume the next move. Unless you hold. Unless you hold. Roger. So if you call in a step in the middle of a step, he's going to add it. He's going to just keep on going until the total yes. is reached. Especially if the steps are the same. But if the steps are not the same, like different direction, yeah. So it might take the uh, so cool how the medium. Um, yeah. it, it's like adding vectors, isn't it? Exactly. Yes. That's guts of a pillow lava. Pillow lava guts. <laughs> it's a horror story out there. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing a lot more polished manganese crust around here, so uh, it's telling us a little bit about current. According to our manganese yeah, specialists. Going. Um, oh my so gosh. Back row, we are going down slope and we can just keep going like this. Do you want us to go any faster or? Is that pumice do you think? That is pumice. Um, like I think uh, the speed is okay. Um, okay. Yeah, let's just keep moving. Ratch. Maintain point three. Yeah. What if we kick it up to point four? Would that uh, be offensive to people? I'm not offended. Okay. I'm happy with it, yeah. Point four, yes, please. Yeah, Pretty this is now. 
50 meter south, 0 0.4 uh, knot speed. Affirmative. Thanks, Woman. So we have a question about what the dedicated tea kettle of engineering did. What was, what was its job? It uh, tests our temp probe. <laughs> oh, totally serious. Like we like boil hot water in it because we're if we're gonna do hydrothermal vent work, we're gonna shove temp probes in there, and we want to make sure that they're working. Hmm. So yeah, boil calibrated, <laughs> kind of calibrated, just kind of seeing Highly it work. Highly technical. Highly yeah. ground truthed. Yeah, because that is one of the things you do with hydrothermal vents. Is if you're looking for like uh, water or gas sampling, you kind of like poke the hydrothermal vent and you look for a hot spot uh, to try to get your most representative sample. <laughs> so you want that probe working properly. Yeah, and there, some of them are like ceramic probes, or the, cer the sensor inside has like a ceramic component to it. And if you put it directly with into like a very stark temperature difference, then it's gonna, it can crack. Oh, mm -hmm. right. So you wanna make sure that they, those are functional. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, ceramic can be sensitive to that whole thermal expansion issue. Yeah. Is this view okay for you guys? Or do you want oh, any closer? Yeah, I just felt that too. It just cycled on. I'll see you. Thanks. Uh, do you think there's any chance of new lava appearing in the areas we're exploring? In the areas where what? In in these areas and on these seamounts. Uh nope. Um the source of lavas for these seamounts is currently zooming out several thousand active. miles to the southeast and like uh, up to one football or something. I think it's full zoomed out or it's frozen. No, zoom in. Oh, in. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. Just uh, like that. So that yeah. way when the ship heaves. I got you. I can just try to keep it in with the tilt camera. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, the next nearest... Um, Hotspot source. Oh, is my tilt Hawaii. ran away. Sorry. Right. Yeah, I didn't note that. These are west of Hawaii, so they're going to continue moving uh, further west and a little bit north of the Hawaiian hotspot. So, uh, uh, no, they haven't erupted in a long time and probably, probably never will again. So. You know what would make a really cool poster? What? what? Would be to take. Um, the you know how they have the 3D renderings of the seamounts? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'd be to take that and take just the silhouette of it and just make it like a black line and then, you know, and the ridge we're going up and then to take all of the shots from Atalanta of, well, have you seen those pictures of people climbing Everest at night and it's just the lights going up the mountain? Yeah. So you oh. could take all the pictures of, of Herc from Atalanta because we have the locations of those frames yeah. and you could pick like one in 50 of them or something uh, and you could chart zoom it on this fan quick that'd be uh, cool i'm sorry would it be possible to zoom on this fan on the left the primnoid yeah yeah sure thing i've never seen that mount Everest thing you're talking about it sounds cool though right i'll show it to you after shift okay. or tomorrow probably yeah right. go to bed, <laughs> but in in a broad sense after shift <laughs> in the future <laughs> yes really picturesque. Yeah. Got a little crab buddy push hanging out. Please. <laughs> hands up. <laughs> yeah. Do a little crab dance mm -hmm. over there. Do Put your hands in the air like you just don't care. <laughs> 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 Do we have a lot of current at this spot? All right, full light. Actually, no. Thankfully, no. <laughs> um, yeah. Nope. No current. Thank 
But you could chart the Atalanta pictures of her to the locations they were in and put them on that silhouette, like as if it was, you know, and you could see the path climbing up the mountain that way. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Sounds like, Rhett, you're interested in doing this. I'm thinking about Photoshop? how much work it would take. Yeah, Raj. I missed it. How much work it would take to do what? To do the... Um, the poster. Uh, silhouette poster. Mm. I, think, I think I can think of a process to do it. I have another question coming in. Monster. What is the procedure if we find an old shipwreck or a plane underwater? Mm. It might be your wheelhouse, sure. uh, Justin. Um, well, I uh, kind of overheard what Dwight was saying before, <laughs> that uh, depending on, uh, I guess, the situation, we may or may not live broadcast it, and we would collect some data to share out. But uh, within the monument, that would we definitely would need to kind of stop and check back in with the permit coordinator, but definitely let them know about it. Yeah, like document. Yeah, but I am not 100% yeah. sure. Document report. Yeah. I'd no lead, touchy. I think Dwight would be the best as the expedition lead for this. Yeah. To say. Yeah, because uh, as he was mentioning on the previous watch, uh, this is uh, not far from uh, uh, some uh, uh, from from uh, some old World, world War Two battle locations. Mm -hmm. This is now so. another move, same step. Yeah. So it's it's a non-zero possibility. Most of that happened farther northwest of here. Yeah. But yeah, like you said, it is possible still. Yep. And there were a lot of whaling ships that passed this way toward the waters closer to Japan back in the uh, 1800s. But um, generally, they tended to wreck closer to the extensive shallow water reefs and shoals mm -hmm. we're pretty f we're pretty far out here eh, not a place too many people go although it was like a week and a half ago or so where we saw a ship one night just yeah. way out there yeah we saw we were we saw what maybe what, what i was told was a fishing vessel uh okay. at, that's i think that's the one you're talking about and then we also saw um a cargo ship that to my eye, looked quite large, but was actually classed as like a small cargo ship. Huh. Yeah. I didn't hear about the cargo ship. Okay. It was one of the largest man-made things I have seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are some huge ones. It was on the horizon, and it still looked huge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, within the monument boundaries, uh, fishing is not allowed. But um, we were we've been working a lot right on the edge of the boundary, so I wouldn't be surprised if they were just right outside it. Um, but um, can we zoom quickly on that whip? Yeah, sure thing. Ships can also let our permits team; uh, they can request a innocent passage oh, if they need to pass there? through the monument to get where they're going. What was that? You want to come down a wee bit? Not really. Oof. Um, <laughs> some of those weird waves. I mean, again. I will, yeah. but it's because my altitude is the same as our delta. Please zoom a bit more. Whenever Isn't you that weird right there? Go to push on in. Okay. Yeah. yeah sea it's star. All good. Did you no, think? Did you see that? Here. That was coral. Sorry. Bamboo. Great, thanks. Yeah, away, please. If we have time to take a quick look, can you pull out just a little bit more, camera wise? I think I think Red's full wide. I am full wide. Oh, maybe we just move closer. Somewhere over, right in here, there was this like kind of pink thing. spotted purpley. Ooh, yeah, it's right a bit there. Of coral. Oh, oh, okay. So it's just the way it looked rock. in the rocks. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. Right. And the Coralium. I thought it was some cool star or something. It's just a cool coral. Just a cool, <laughs> beautiful coral. <laughs> there, um, there is maritime archaeology that takes place within the monument. Um, it's a big potato of it right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, including some uh, some wrecks from the Battle of Midway, mostly planes um, during that were lost during training. 
But uh, there's a lot of more whaling ships that have been found. And uh, if you look up Lightning Strikes Twice, there's actually a short uh, film that was written about the um, this kind of discovery and uh, research of the Two Brothers whaling ship, which happened to be captained by the same person who captained the Essex, mm. the famous ship that uh, Herman Melville based uh, Moby Dick on. And yes, Sounds he did. Sounds like an interesting read. He did lose his second ship, hence Oops. the lightning strikes twice. Yeah. Actually, that sounds vaguely familiar. I'm trying to remember if I may have read that one. Did he only have ago. one leg? sponge. Mm. A very big sponge. Oh, oh yeah. cool. I don't know. It's one of those ones I'm always like, local calyx, but I don't think it is. <laughs> Do a snap zoom there, please, Rick. Cool. Interesting. The whole pass is cool down there, too. Keep moving. Yeah. Please, please. Oh, this is now another move, same step. Oh, sorry, Leela, I'm That's behind okay, Argus yeah. now. I like all these squat lobsters. They're just sort of hanging on the rock nearby. Yeah. I know. They're eye. all away from their Antilopsamia homes. Okay. Maybe it's these an tall Atlanticella euplectelid. These Have tall it. rocks may serve the same purpose as climbing up high on a coral or something. Oh, fair. That is deep and dark. Yep. Had a down toward, yeah, sort of steep slope toward uh, waypoint seven in the saddle point, then we'll start coming back up. But, um, we got some ground to make up, too. Stalked an enemy, it looks like. Ah, apparently that's the first one of those sponges we've seen all cruise, according to Chris. I don't, uh, I don't know if any, any anybody else has uh, picked something like that up. Cool. There are definitely some shipwrecks in the monument, but... I think most of the ones that we know about are closer to Midway Island. Yeah, or uh, kind of uh, in the reef shoal areas nearby of mm. some of the other islands as yes. well. A lot of whaling ships there. I think uh, this is a little bit foggy memory, but our uh, maritime archaeologist had told me that I think there's, based off of like journal research, historical research, there's potentially 86 wrecks, uh -huh. known wrecks in the area. We definitely have not found that many yet. Wow. Don't quote me 100% on that number, but that's what comes to mind. Oh, fish. Yeah. That's a talosaur? I don't know. From here, I can't tell. Yeah. Sometimes they just look like halosaurs, don't they? You can just tell mm. from the distance. This one seems that to have a bigger looks head. A little, yeah, wider. Okay. One thing I've noticed about these deeper dwelling fish is that, with a few exceptions, uh, their tails don't fork I at all. Know. Roger. They don't get bigger. They just have long, sort of tapering eel like tails. Yeah, a lot of eel like fish down here. Just wonder what the connection is between the depth and and that. Does the fork increase their speed? Sure. Yes. Yeah, and the, if you look at tunas, for example, ooh, where it's ooh. kind of curved and very sharp forked, it's good for longer distances and speed. And then you have some that are good for bursts of speed. And then you have more of the reef fish with like the wrasses and stuff that. Can we zoom on that quickly? That are built more for kind of quick maneuverability. Yeah, we're pretty behind, spaces. but oh, okay. okay. Just even if it's super quick. Yeah, go ahead and push on in, please. So, so yeah, I'm curious too. Like, what's the All right. so benefit to that? Yeah, so wait, please. 
I also think it's funny that they swim at weird angles, like upside down or yeah. head toward the ground. Or like. I wonder if it's not worth the energy to write themselves for, hmm. for a while. I feel like I only see them swimming like that when they're close to the ROV. I wonder if they get stunned somehow. Yeah, maybe. Chris like is typing something. Maybe he's going to give us some Anna ideas. Riddleboard, yeah. Oh, he's talking corals. Oh, big bamboo. Or big whip. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's got some height to it. Oh, yeah. We have a question That's about up behind you there. whether we've ever found human bones or whale bones on a dive. We did find a whale carcass a couple seasons ago, and if you go to Nautilus Live, watch that target behind you there. Oh, you can find the video of that whale fall. Try to get in front of you a bit. Small stock spawn. Yeah, can't yeah. see from here, but maybe Sacco Calyx. Yeah. I think they even did a. They revisited it, I think it was a couple years later we were talking about earlier, and I believe both of those are available on the website. So you okay. can kind of see the progression of decay, or of... Okay, Becro, uh, just to get Atalanta in a good spot, because uh, there's an interesting target behind us. Uh-huh. Uh, in front of us. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit high up in the water column, so Kylie doesn't have to come down on the winch for a minute. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Sounds good. All right. I think it cleared. Raj. Whoa. Ooh. A lot of these look kind of young, don't they? And then you got some really big stuff. Gonna call in another move there, please, Solomon. Uh, one more, one more move. Okay. Press this is now. Another move, same step. If anyone in the audience is interested in doing what we do and uh, helping to make some of the decisions on where we go and working with science communication or uh, navigation or ROV piloting, um, you can go to nautiluslive.org and there's a join uh, function, join button that will give you information on how to apply to uh, be a member of our core of exploration. I'm not paying out until it internships gets open away. in August. Yeah. Yes. Right. Applications. I think uh, Chris and Asago may might meter. like a zoom on that yeah. yellowish coral if possible. So, so I'm going to come down a if, meter if or possible. So. Roger that. We're getting a lot of that ship shake, aren't we? Yeah, mm. we've got some of these bigger waves coming through now and again. We're uh, feeling the control van shake a little bit. The you know, whole ship's shaking a little bit when they hit. It should be terrifying, but I feel like when I'm in bed and we're getting those big shakes, it like is kind of comforting, kind of like going to bed. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> relaxing. Bit. I find I sleep best when we're underway. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like Just, I like yeah. the rolliness. It's very nice. I have some relatives that have a, a water bed in their guest room. And it's like not one of the ones that have little tubes of water. It's like just one huge oh, no. bag of 
of water That's and wild. it feels a lot like sleeping on the ship like <laughs> just the rolling <laughs> like you move joke. you move one part of your body and the ripple just sort of goes from your head to your toes huh it's pretty neat yeah i always have trouble sleeping when i get back on the land after one of these yeah. rov next time i know that you already know this maybe but next time we see any any yellowy corals that we can zoom on that would be awesome any yellowy corals raj you have a question about, uh, do we ever use bait to see what animals are in an area? They have the drop cams that are baited. Yeah. Not on the ROVs, but the drop cams, we take uh, a bunch of small bait fish and schmoosh them up into sort of like a slow release type canister. Is it okay if I use bubble? Yeah, go ahead. Um, the drop cams are, are National you. Geographic Reg. drop cameras. You pretty much, yeah bait them, put, put mushed up bait on, on the bait stick um, attached to them and drop them down and they sink, sink, sink to the bottom and uh, and you can program them so that um, they release after a while um, release from their weights and then pop up to the surface and then we get them and they have various beacons we can use to find them Do they film continuously or are they like a camera trap? Um, they, oh, I wish I could remember. They do film continuously, I think. They have some like weird light pulse things that they do at the beginning. Interesting. Yes, please. This is now another move, same step, please. Sometimes when you have a stateroom at the bow of the ship, when one of those big, like, shaky waves hits, though, it does actually wake you up because mm. it just, like, resonates up there. Mm. Yeah, the bow thruster is really loud up there, too. Oh, yeah. yeah my first cruise, 35-day um, cruise, I had one of the bow cabins right by the thruster. So. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Some big fans back there. So That's I can see. Yeah, yeah. Trina Plura. When you're up there, you can tell every uh, every move the ship makes, when the dredge goes down, when the dredge comes up, <laughs> when you turn, when you're mapping. Kind of nice. You always know what's going on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you get a little tired after a while, yeah. though. It, it can be hard to, a little hard to sleep sometimes. But um, yeah, it's, it's kind of fun to have an idea of what's going on, just by how things sound or feel. So it used to be with the winch and the aft yeah. hold. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. Birthing. Yeah. But you can always tell when people are like smashing rocks. <laughs> <laughs> or sawing them in half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How bad is the sawing from below decks? Uh, it's, it's, it's I don't fine. hear the sawing as much as I hear thumping. Ah, uh, OK. Yeah, we try not to thump. It hasn't woken me up. It's okay, the name good. of the game, you know? I've woken up to you guys doing it before and had no idea so like walked up and seen you doing it ah, okay but it it was not related to me waking up we only had to hammer one rock on the deck and that was the one that was really really hard to saw and we kind of had to finish it by uh chiseling it open mm -hmm. and i needed the leverage from having it on the deck instead of higher up Plus, it was bouncing too much on other stuff. Yeah, the, the plywood was a wee bit bouncy for <laughs> what we needed. So, that thankfully, that was brief, so I don't even know if anybody noticed. Hopefully not. There are a lot of loud noises. Yeah. <laughs> it's just one among many. 
It's a busy ship, 24-7. Yep. And there's a lot of upkeep that you have to do uh, while you're underway, too. So, yeah, I there are a lot of noises on and off throughout the day. I feel bad for people who sleep up towards the front because the bottom is sampler is... Sorry? So oh, I just see something purple there. It's yeah, probably it's a, fish a fish or a holothurian maybe stretching out. Uh, no, it's like a fish. fish. Looks like a fish. Yeah. What are you saying, Rhett? I feel bad for people who sleep up towards the front because the sub-bottom, um, what's the word, profiler? Oh, the profiler. Yeah, the sub-bottom profiler is is quite loud. Yeah. And it has, yeah, it's like an irregular quarters. chirping noise. Um, Oh, so you can't just white noise it? <laughs> no, because it, it's like, depending on the depth, it comes back at a different time, and then they send it out again. So it, it's like sometimes it's every few yeah, seconds, it. sometimes it's like 10 or, or the, more. The first day that There's threw me, halosaur. I didn't know what it was, and I couldn't tell where it was coming from, and I'd just yeah. like lie awake and be like, oh, what is that noise? And then after a day or two, like it was just background noise, so yeah. I yeah. couldn't sleep through it. Ratch. Actually, yeah, that was one of the other Roger things that. Uh, I could tell on that five-week cruise. I could I could hear uh, the multi-beam, or you know, the profile or whatever, uh, loud and clear. And I could tell when we switched uh, depth modes. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew when we were in shallower Bridget, water. This is now another move, same step, please. Chris thinks that fish was, may have been a Coryphonotes. When in doubt, Coryphonotes. I was reading about early uh, seafloor mapping efforts and how they invented um, usable sonar before they invented anything that you could automate it with. So they would send out the sound and then someone had to sit there with a stopwatch every time mm -hmm. and wait for, it to c wait for it to come back and hear it. And uh, oh, that wow. sounds like the most horrible job I can oh imagine. My gosh. Can you imagine doing that on a night watch? For like hours and hours. Yeah. You gotta have some good music on your gramophone. It's so tedious. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't. You can't listen to anything else because you oh, miss true. it. That's Like, you oh, really just it's, have to be completely devoted to it. Apparently, they stopped doing it because people just would straight up st quit. They would like go to sleep or like stop doing it and pretend they had or something. Wow. It like, sounds like a task that would be really hard to stay focused on without being able to do anything else. It's like inhuman. Yeah. Like there there is some mindless repetitive tasks that you can you can do. But yeah, waiting for pings and not being able to do anything else or listen to anything else because you need to hear the pings, it does kind of sound torturous. And it's not even like a regular thing where you could get into a rhythm because it's literally the irregularity that you're trying to detect. Exactly. So it's just completely like the most possible, most tedious task possible. Yeah. So they, they quit doing that as fast as they could. <laughs> Don't blame them. Yeah, we're pretty spoiled with how sophisticated uh, uh, our uh, the sonar tech is now. <coughs> right, when was it that they were doing this manual counting? Like 1920-ish. I see. 1910s wow. and 20s, I think. Yeah, and even into like the 50s and 60s, a lot of it was still kind of analog. So you had like, uh, yeah. like it was getting recorded, but you still had all these like paper tapes that you had to roll out. The right. boat that they were covering in the book I was reading uh, in the 50s um, had, it did that automatically, it did the whole thing automatically, but um, it ran off of the same power supply as the entire rest of the ship. So if someone like left the fridge open for too long, then their data would be completely ruined um, for, for the night. Because huh. it, it would have to have a bigger draw and it would mess up their yeah, mess up the recordings. Okay. Yeah. We have someone asking if we've ever Damn encountered heads. any giant squid. Unfortunately not. We did see an adorable Dumbo oct octopus, though. Twice. Not yet. Twice. In Adelaide <laughs> and in her. Really thrice. But the one was kind of like a ghost. Could be more. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was some seriously cool footage, though, because it was kind of ghostly. There was one instance where I saw something go under a rock, but we couldn't relocate what it was, so. Yeah, right. I, I, you know, obviously not sure, but it seemed octopus-like to me. Oh. Oh, Ooh. hello. 
These Tritoplora have so many funky shapes. That one almost reminds me of the architecture of the Sydney Opera House. Ooh, oh, I see it's it. from that high angle. Not so much this angle. Yeah, oyster mushroom now. Oh yeah, it does look yeah. like an oyster mushroom. Oh man, a good fried oyster mushroom. <laughs> that must be a really good spot. That's pretty crowded there. It is, this one rock, this is a good rock. <laughs> Did you yeah, say a high five from a rock? <laughs> <laughs> uh, from a dog, oh okay. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> it does look like a paw. I like it. High five. <laughs> or like a foam finger almost. Oh hey, sediments. Woohoo. <laughs> I have a question for you, Val. How do the various scientists get their research projects included in Nautilus's plans? Um, I probably have a really roundabout way that that all happened, so I don't think I have a good answer for Nautilus specifically. I know a tiny bit more about general like ship time scheduling, but... Yeah. I think there are uh, like workshop events sometimes when Nautilus is planning on being in a certain area to sort of like hear uh, ideas from the community around there. Um, but I don't know that much about the like actual process then of how things get chosen or yeah, what the funding strategy is. I know on past cruises, some groups like multiple groups have come on board and sort of like one funding has been split between the two groups so for like we'll one person will bring their we'll funding. Wait for you guys to come out. And Roger. another entity will bring theirs. Can we look at this little guy? Yeah. Is it? Is it what I think it is? Oh my, oh god. my gosh. Is it it's, it's another one. Oh my it god. is. Stop I saw the filaments. Look at it. Oh, it's perfect in every way. Oh. It's extruding. Oh. Yay. Oh my gosh. Look at it go. Dandelion Sapana 4. It's so twirling. Cool. It is dancing. <laughs> it like is off. my spirit yeah. animal. Oh, <gasps> Look at that. Oops. Sorry. Maybe we can take that off. But let's. So what do you think? Wow. That's nice That's right there. So cool. Oh, oh wow. that, that right really there. Oh. Pop. No, we do not want you to dramatically exit the screen yet. <laughs> 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 we just mm -hmm. met you. Oh Jason. God! It's just like th twirling around, throwing flowers out. It's like oh, <laughs> <laughs> just did that just for you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> when is it gonna run out of those things? I don't know. I feel like this belongs in a Fantasia movie. I also couldn't movie. find <laughs> anything about what Batman. those are. Why does this remind me of Totoro? <laughs> yeah, Ooh. totally. I was thinking Fantasia, but it's Totoro very, might be better. It's very Miyazaki. Look at it, it go. Okay, the jet propulsion on this thing is just so impressive. <laughs> wow, all right, I'm happy, made my day. That was a dramatic exit. <laughs> I really wanted to see another one of those. Right? Yay. Those are cool. <laughs> Wait, do what? I think the like spewing dandelion things, but they've all been doing it. Is porch light still on? Yeah, it is. Yeah, why do they do that? It seems I like you run out. I couldn't find. Quick. I googled all over. I couldn't find anything about it. But it makes sense that that would be dandelion esque, you know. Yeah, you blow on I a seed head dandelion. No seed one head. has mentioned what it is, and I don't know. As the siphonophore, yeah, what, saw that what, last time. what, what I wonder are if you doing like with that? Budding new offspring when it does that or something. Yeah, like, I I wonder how long. Like, is it doing that all the time? Or I wonder is if it it's a defense thing. Yeah, that was my question. Like, is it doing that because we're here? Or? Yeah, it's like. Defense, eggs, poop. I don't know. Just, just, just it's way of life. It seems like it would take a lot of energy to produce whatever yeah. mucus or whatever that is and yeah. spew it out. It seems like a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we have a, a viewer from Crete at the moment. Yes. Um, they're saying we must be in the wee hours of the morning, making us the midnight to four watch. <laughs> and what bet did we lose? <laughs> are you kidding? This is the place to be. It is the place to We're be. We're having yeah. a great time. We are the nocturnals, yeah. even when they're who are the nooners. <laughs> <laughs> Twelve to four for life. Yeah, everybody on board. Um, well. 
who isn't doing other things is assigned a watch mm -hmm. and we have a uh, two four hour section so 12 to 4 p.m. and a.m. or 4 to 8 or 8 to 12. Ooh, big bamboo stock dead bamboo Favorite thing we found on this expedition? You just saw one of them. That's I think. it. That is my favorite that, thing. That was definitely one. <laughs> of that the is top. the second one of my favorite things. I keep saying that wall of basket stars. Yeah, that's that was really thing. cool. I really like chonacops. Little anglerfish. <laughs> yeah. Pokemon anglerfish. Yeah, we were talking about. There's so much that happens on the other watches that we don't even realize kind of looking forward to when we start transiting back to port kind of doing a little share mm -hmm. yeah i kind of want to see a highlights like a greatest hits compilation of this cruise i wonder if we no, have just from our 12 to fours <laughs> yeah True. i want to see <laughs> our greatest hits <laughs> it would be fun to hear more about the rest of the rocks that you found and oh to do gosh. another like hear Beth go over another overview okay and also have the highlights that would be that would be cool to watch i was thinking about doing like a Google Google Earth kind of thing of the seafloor. So do they want yeah. something in here or? Uh, yeah, we should ask the back row. Back row. Howdy. Would you like Howdy. something nearby Waypoint Seven as we are? Um. Okay, so one thing that we're thinking about doing. Um, do a pilot slot here. Is maybe deviating slightly, uh, slightly off of the planned route and looking at some of these really steep faces once we get uh, past waypoint eight. And I'm trying to decide if I want to dip below the contour on the way to waypoint eight or just go straight there. Um, hmm. Looks like a pretty steep slope on the side there. Yeah, I'm interested in the steep slopes. So I was wondering if we could deviate a little bit. Uh, Kind of go southwest, but just below the uh, the peak. Yeah, I think where you're drawing, Silmon. Yeah, that looks good. And then proceed all the way here, or then come back to waypoint eight. Uh, I think I think we'll not go directly to waypoint eight, but we'll start working our way up generally toward waypoint nine. Okay. Yeah. We'll go this yeah. way and then start. Yeah, because Dwight and I were talking earlier uh, this evening, and we're uh, we're really interested in seeing what we might be able to see structurally, like in cross section, uh, as we go uh, up the steep part of uh, this this uh, transect. Okay. Yeah, I do kind of want to see some of our highlights because I'm sure we sound a lot, uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot more eccentric uh, than we realize, and I am here for it. <laughs> I kind of want to just do like a still cam show, like, hey, here are Ooh. pictures of all the crazy things that we've captured in still cam, because there cool. are some good ones. Yeah. That would be I'm, really cool. That would be great. I would prefer to see the video because of our commentary. Uh, yes, <laughs> that too. I mean, we should do it all. We have three days, right? Maybe you we have could just do like live commentary to the right? skills. Do. People are like, give a fungus talk. And I'm like, no, still cam images. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it all. We have three days of the transit. <laughs> I yeah. will have a lot of data management stuff to do, but oh, well, yeah, that. I'm trying to get things as finalized as I can now because I know there's still going to be more to do on the transit back. I'll help you uh, with the rocks. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. got to sort out the subsamples. Oh, yeah, we got to sort out the packing. Once we go actually up the slope, Roger. Is that is that what you mean? Yeah. Well, be super sweet if we could be ready to put that straight on a pallet. Oh, yeah. sorry, that girl. One second. Sorry, can you say it again, Sullivan? We were just talking about pallets when we get back. When you and sorry, Kylie, I, I, oh, I didn't, sorry, I didn't copy that. Can you please repeat? Oh, Ooh, can this we reduce the speed yellow? actually to point three for, for 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 that for this next part here? Yeah, starting from now, it'd be great. 
two zero zero, you said? Thank you. Oh, uh, would you like a zoom on this? Uh, yes, yes, I would. A zoom, please. Mm, Plex orbit. Is that full in? Oh, you can go, yep. Ooh. Okay, thank you. Come yeah. on. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I'm hoping yes. yeah. I ask I'll nicely. get out ahead. Yeah. We may not have to Raj. ship things once we get back into Honolulu over to the University of Hawaii. <laughs> we might be able to just convince Jasper or somebody else to come get the box. <laughs> to come get it? It's the university's like just three miles away or so from Oh the oh dock. you mean the U U H one. Yeah. Yes. That that would make a lot of sense. Yes. Seems like overkill to try to ship that if we can oh, no. beg somebody they, to come out no, and get they it. should definitely come get it. Lila, Hopefully. did you see that? The consensus is that it's a hydrozoan. Okay. That we just looked at. Solandaria species. It's a pretty big one. The, uh... Oh, hi, Tina. Hope everything's going well. I keep thinking about your poem, Christopher. Yeah. My wife has some similar stories. Oh, I'll bet. And the last two or three weeks of the school year are just unbearable because we have no air conditioning in our building, only heat. And on the second floor where my science lab is, it just smells like stinky teenagers and oh, science geez. and it's just muggy. <laughs> Is the school never had air conditioning, or is they this have this air a conditioning in the first floor in the main office? And Look at that sea star! Oh my god! Oh yeah! Upper oh my left gosh! Corner. That thing is oh. a right there. You mean? Yeah, oh. that's insane. Can we get a look at him? What are you? Whoa! That's a gonna be. That is beefy. It's got a big wingspan too. Yeah. You see the little one to the right of it too. Hello. Yeah. Oh, and above it. It's a full yeah, patch. It's a little party. Ferrea sponge. Wow, that is huge. Chris says uh, slime yeah. star. It has that that button in the middle, that look of slime star, doesn't it? I think, zoom. I think that's the, the madriporite, maybe. Um madriporite is off center. It's uh okay. So what is the little hole in the top then? Um, nice. um, 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 I zoom. I want to say anus. Is that possible? Could be. Uh, let's see. Okay, come on. Isn't that on the other side? Mouth on other side. But now I have to remember if they also it's have. No, yeah, it's the anus. It's a big oh. guy. Huh. Yerp. Cool. Jeez Louise. That little guy reminds me of some of the... Um, minus minus 29 makes you pretty floaty if you want that for going uphill here. Some of the Asiatic lilies that I used to grow. Yeah. Oh, nice. I like that color scheme. Do you have a question about whether there are any more rock or biological samples to collect in this dive? Yes. Um, we definitely yeah, have Z space for that. We so never really know. Tiny little bit of Victor Gorgia. Oh, yeah. Nice spot. We're never quite sure about the biology until we get there. That's why we have a team of scientists on shore and also with us on the ship to help us decide which ones to sample and which ones to just get photos and video of and leave there. We definitely know that Beth is going to want a sample closer to the top, I think. Yeah. Yeah. 
So we've collected two for her. We, ha we uh, uh, have up to three samples for her per dive. So we'll see what's higher up because we don't know whether or not the lithology is going to change once we get up to this really steep wall. Well, I am admittedly a little tired, we'll but I can't move. believe we're already three hours into our Pretty, This is now, right? Yeah. Another move, same step, please. Mm. We haven't been seeing too many mushroom corals, yeah. Yeah, I feel like we saw a few at some earlier point in the dive. Yeah. But yeah, they went for away a couple, for a while. but sometimes we've been seeing, like, you know, that's one of the main things. and. Yeah, this one's just been a smattering. Was that yesterday's dive or this morning? <laughs> um, <laughs> when I think it was impossible Beth's to watch, tell. And they saw this whole kind of large boulder side covered. And it looked oh red yeah. because it was oh. so covered in kind of really small mushroom coral. Cool. Oh, that's cool. It was really neat. Is that an anemone? What is this? I don't a know. Sponge? I know. A chrysogorgid uh, in front of a sponge. Oh, I think that's Roger. It. Looks like it's riding the sponge. I know. Looks <laughs> like, like a, a snail at first. Like, yeah, like yeah. a dinosaur, like a small little. Yes. Anyway, dragon or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a little hard to interpret. Yeah, my brain. I was like, is it a tunica? I really can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing stuff. Yeah, out. I'll guess anything. When in doubt, tunica. it's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a science. Giddy up. <laughs> I was like, oh, a species name from Chris. Giddy up. <laughs> I'd be careful reading about anything Chris writes. <laughs> you know, push out ahead there, Kim. Yeah, Roger. Kylie, do you mind if I check to make sure I'm full wide? Sure, yeah. Okay, we're good. What kind of music do you like, Justin? Me? Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of like what Christopher was saying, sort of an eclectic mix. Mm. Um, hmm. I would say that my maybe like, I don't know. I don't even know what to call it. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by the sponge over here. <laughs> totally reasonable. I'll think about it. What were you listening to most recently? I, I listen to a lot of podcasts, actually, usually oh. more than music. <laughs> sure. I go through phases like that. It's me kind too. of on and off for me, whether I'm listening to podcasts or music. Yeah. into barnacle territory bad about the same depth wicked good I, I can't say I've Ooh, listened to him for a long time but in high school I went and saw the Pogues uh, in, in San Francisco and that was really fun I've never heard them but I like their band name yeah <laughs> They played on Saturday Night Live once. Oh yeah. When Dennis Miller was doing the weekend update, the news, and, and so they played right before him, and he's like, "Yeah, I like the Pogues, but 
I've always been a sucker for lyrics because you couldn't understand a single word. <laughs> he is a little said. hard to understand. They have a mix of kind of funny punk rock style and then kind of ballady. Yeah. I kind of like f Irish folk songs. That's cool. Sounds like a good combination. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. I'll have to look them up. I think I've heard of the Pogues. I'm not sure I've ever heard their music, but yeah. Sounds like something that would be really fun to listen to. This is actually pretty steep. Yeah. Contour map seems wrong. Uh, just is deeper than expected. De deceptive. Yeah. Yeah, 10 meter contours. So we're only seeing uh, some of the nuance here. Deceptive steps. Deceptive steps, deceptive Also, the rocks. gridding on the map itself is less than 10 meters, so. Yeah, good point. Yeah, because this is pretty. Or greater than. This is very deep mapping mode Maybe. at these depths. Deep to very deep. I forget where the crossover is. Three. Three? Oh, wait, no, no. no. Three to, to very. Yeah, I think it's 3,000 ish to very deep. Ah, okay, so we're deep mapping. But the multi beam is a little weird around that depth, so we usually switch to very deep. Gotcha. There. Oh, another group I've sort of enjoyed lately is Nathaniel Rateliff and the Night Sweats. Oh, they're great. Yeah, I like that band. What kind of music do they play? Uh, I don't know. What would you call it, right? Um, it's like folk rocky kind of. It's Americana ish. It's, okay. Um, they, but it's very energetic. Um, there was a song by them that um, went very f mainstream a few years ago, um, but I can't sing it because it has a swear word in it. Um, <laughs> I can't remember what the name of it is offhand. Just uh, if you'd heard the chorus, you would know. You would know who they were. I have a bunch of friends that are really into the mountain goats, and that's I oh yeah, oh yeah. That's my my next like. Spotify deep dive. I was just li I was just reading an interview with uh, John it's Darnell. Cool. Two um, the Chris Agorja, yeah. The two man himself. Are I think it's move. two really close together. Okay. Bridge, this is now another move. Same step, please. I like his stuff. Um, he kind of reminds me of um, like Bob Dylan or Thoreau in that he talks a lot, and every now and then he has something that's like completely gold and then the rest of the time it's like okay I'm glad you're working through that Ooh. here's Ooh. this little section Hello. Nice little patch uh, Leela did we want to do any eDNAs at any point um, yeah I've been thinking about density what was that did you say something Jess or someone in front oh, no. I didn't say anything no um, I don't know. It could be good to grab one. We don't, let's see. We already have two yes. micro samples for Beth. She'd probably only need one more. Yeah. I'm wondering what we're going to see further up and if we're going to wish we had them there. It's thinking exactly the same thing. It's like, did we want to pull one here or do we want to see how things change yeah. upslope? We had a question about. Do, you, uh, do you guys? So sorry. Uh, what's the? What's the? I don't think there was any consensus there. No, not I yet. I think probably not yet, unless it picks up in density a little more. Proud to that. Okay. Yeah. Let's keep moving then. We had a question about uh, whether bells. There are a lot of clocks in this room. There sure are. <laughs> Showing different times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hope not. i got to check that every hour. <laughs> All right, what is this one? Did you get a good look at that, Chris? some kind of McCurrid. Yeah. Yeah, kind of had a, not like the really bulbous head like on those blackfish yeah, we were seeing still last dive. Chunk but your head. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> those are the ones I have the hardest time identifying. They don't have as many distinguishing characteristics. It's set up yeah. there. 
So you, yeah. it is a McCreary. Okay, I would have wow. guessed that. Wow. How big that thing is. He didn't give you enough information or enough view probably. Did Chris already answer? He said it was a McCreary, but he wasn't well, sure which one. Oh, there we go. Just over us real quick. Raj. Really These are large. some nice little communities. We have a viewer telling us that they've been watching us for years and decided to enroll in a marine bio university degree program. Hey, oh cool. Gosh, awesome. So Congratulations. Cool. That's wonderful. Oh, yeah. Fairy Good Tale morning. of New York. That was They sang that at the concert. I went. That was great. Yeah. That one was a little more popular, I think, of the Pogues. Internships are opening in a few months. If you're interested in joining the crew in the Nautilus for a spell. Well, you should be. If you're enrolled in a in a program, no. you are eligible to apply. I wish I would have done that when I was a marine bio major. I don't know. We didn't have the Nautilus when I was a marine yeah. bio major. But <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you would have done something with the Alvin. Yeah, could be. Is that another oh, fan yeah. or... Yeah, a couple more fans. Yeah, yeah, more fans, another fish. Oh yeah, good eye. Uh, there are a lot oh. of small white Can things. Can we zoom fish if possible? If possible, sure. yes. Yeah, just, I think a quick one will be okay. Uh, I think Chris wants an ID on it. Sea fish, zoom fish. Red Rock. fish. Blue fish. Blue fish. <laughs> <laughs> Red fish, blue fish, sea fish, <laughs> zoom fish. I got gotcha, you. Gotcha, gotcha. Let's see. So I'm we started. Go forward and not down. <laughs> we started this watch with Shakespeare, oh, and now we're doing Earth Dr. Seuss. <laughs> John the Cops. Okay. Video uh, zoom me on him. him. Gory for no <laughs> Nice. I think there's only two kinds of fish. Yep. Chana cops and not Chana cops. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, state of the watch, yes. Shakespeare down to Dr. Seuss. He Actually, doesn't want help to really Dr. Demotion, Seuss. Though. Dr. Seuss did some pretty brilliant Can stuff. So. Back there. Oh, yeah. Okay, come wide, please. I think it's just wonderful that generations of kids have learned to read through poetry. In Dr. Seuss, like Thank you. absolutely, yeah. Shel Silverstein. Shel Silverstein. Yes. Shel Silverstein's good too. Ends. Very cool. Those are the ones I grew more the up with. Yeah. Yes, classic. Uh, that and the Far Side comics. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Seuss's "Oh, the places you'll go," and "Oh, the places we are we right now." Quite a bit right here. Look at where we got. <laughs> right. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> We have a question about whether we find deep ocean caves. We were looking for those a few years ago. And yeah, uh, Osborne up, Bank. Yeah, off the coast of California for a while. I think off the coast of Oregon, maybe. But uh, yeah, we were looking for it. Didn't they have a, like a special ROV that was used just for the caves? No, uh, we hmm. would shoot our sonar into the caves mm -hmm. cool. and then oh, cool. see the depth of them. Was that when we had the Coda Octopus? Was that on for that? I can't it remember. I don't remember. I think even some divers um, went to the really shallow ones. Yeah, I, that's what I remember. There was like a briefing about the season that I was at. Mm. When they were talking about archaeological digs or Scuba Spelunking. God, that sounds... No, no, no. Scary. I just watched The Rescue before coming out here. You know that film? It's... Um, I think I've heard of it. Same film production company that did Free Solo. Um, but it was about sounds when good. those... When in... Tha was Thailand? Somewhere in Southeast Asia when the, the football team was... Yeah, the like soccer team was stuck like in a oh, really deep yeah. cave. Left, I right. remember that one. Look at all the big fans. These are, yeah. yeah. And there are a bunch of cave divers, like random cave divers, especially from the UK, like yeah. came together to save them. It was really, it's a really crazy story. I will do small amounts of caving. I have done scuba. Both are fun. I do not want to combine them. No, 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 no desire. Even caving freaks me out a little bit. I have some friends I, I that are. I could not yeah. do Can the Can we look at that, that yellow really colony on the left, if possible? If not, it's fine. Yeah, caving with the really tight gaps, 
giant nope. That's when my claustrophobia kicks in. I have some friends that are. Uh, you're, you're good. If you look at on the high pack screen, the long pointer is your heading is where your head's facing. Is this what you were talking about, Leela? There was right a there? yellow. It might be that hard to see from the single. Yeah. So then, what will be the new bearing for the target? Two four zero. Cool. Wow, this section is pretty dense, relatively. Mm. Yeah. How about you? Uh, That's as we've seen all dive, that? probably. Yeah. No, no, you're fine. Either way, we'll get you there. That was probably the best for the tether reps. But if you want to drive ahead on this heading for a minute. Yep. One of the inventors of cave diving was from the town I grew up in. Um, and he would uh, go, he was a, a high school teacher there, but he would go cave diving on and summer vacation and then weekends and things with like National Geographic and all these big names. And then he'd go back to teaching math in the school year. Nice. So you're going to start coming under me pretty soon. There's a group of folks that went cave diving in the caves in an iceberg a year or two ago, I think. Oh my god, that seems... And <laughs> they almost died. Yeah, yeah. that seems That's a bit surprising. suicidal. It was very... Those are constantly changing. Like the people in the boat that were supporting them. So I don't remember if the iceberg rolled or broke in Great. parts or what, but something big happened and they were pretty sure their friends were all dead. And then wow. they oh popped up. Yeah, no, that's that's scary. Yeah, if you wanna come, oh, if you wanna come, like kind of here. Do you see my fingers at? What is that big thing that looks like an arch? Is that uh, just rock? I see what you're seeing. Yeah, I think it's, I think a, it's rock. a rock with a lot of fan mm -hmm. and a uh, bamboo whip right yeah. to the left of it. Yeah, back row. We're just doing some maneuvers to get um, in position for this next move along the contour. Okay. Yep. Sure. So we'll lose visual contact for a moment while we do this. No worries. Nice. Yeah. The kind of caves I like are the ones that you can get into easily and, and that's you can great. get right back out of. <laughs> and if you want to go another 45 degrees to starboard, to your right, then I think it should be good. And you'll just have to lateral to the left. Oxygen has climbed a lot. Yeah. I think the right I think thing. down, but I think it's we're... Good. Once we head back up, that could change pretty quick. We have a question from an author. If a deep ocean oh, story involved much. a large cave, would you find it believable, or would you be unable to suspend belief to follow the story? I'm sorry, what? Uh, if, if someone wrote a book and the story involved a large cave mm. undersea, would that be believable to you? Sure, I guess. Uh, depending on, I mean, like when during ice ages, the sea level is a lot lower, and so there could be caves from eroded wave action oh, we can, we can turn them deeper on. down. Um, probably not like super Ooh. duper deep, unless that was some kind of a weirder failure event. fish hanging out to the right of that coral. All right, so we are most of the way through our watch. We are on um, King George Seamount on the northern ridge, right? If I remember correctly for this yes. dive. Mm -hmm. Northeast. We started at, what did we go down to? 2,500 meters, uh, and we are now at 1,214. And we're going to haul it up to 700. Yep. yep. This is going to be a longer dive. We'll be starting to head up out of the water, I think, by 11 o'clock. Yeah. And we are interested in getting a look at how uh, the geology and uh, uh, biology change as we go up along this ridge. Um, 
some deviations here and there to take a look at the sides of the ridge and in particular uh, later in the dive as we start climbing up the really steep sides and get on top hopefully of uh, this geo. We're diving on kind of the uh, northern extreme edge of Papahanaumokuakea in the um, the expanded boundary area that was uh, expanded in 2016 uh, under then President Barack Obama. The original monument was proclaimed through uh, then President George W. Bush in 2006 and has been protected in multiple ways since 1903 and honored and been a very important part of Hawaiian culture for more than a thousand years. Nothing. There are a few viewers commenting on the cave question. Um, apparently there's one in New Zealand that's been uh, explored down to 300 meters and Somewhere still there. goes deeper. Oh, wow. And then uh, there's a book called Into the Planet by Jill Heinerth, who talks about um, diving in an iceberg and almost not making it out. Diving into an iceberg. That's pretty gnarly. Yeah. I just can't imagine. <laughs> no, me either. That sounds like a great idea. I was looking over your shoulder there, Chris, and there's that person from Crete who was talking about the French explorers doing, doing high altitude yeah. cave diving. I wonder, there must be extra complications when you're diving at high altitude. Yeah, there's altitude diving is like a whole another set of uh, kind of dive theory you need to know. Hmm. Even you're, you even have to keep in mind like if you're in Oregon and you have to go over Tombstone Pass or something on the way back there's like a minimum or a maximum amount of altitude you should be changing uh, after doing a dive somewhere. Yeah when we dive on Hawaii Island it's like that because yeah, a lot of really? times we'll go over to the west side and then Try to go home back on the east side. You gotta. Oh, pick and you the have to go over the. Either need to stay the night or pick the very lowest elevation wow. pathway, which is a little bit longer. What's the diving like or near the Big Island? You know, I've only done a little bit. Uh -huh. it's, it's good. I mean, the coral's taking a beating with right. these heat stress events, um, but I've. Never not enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> I like to free dive more though and just I'm scared of free diving. I don't like I don't try to go super deep. Okay. Just, you know, thirty feet is not that right, right. Yeah, that's that's pretty fun. You could, could look at some corals. Yeah. Uh sometimes on uh, like little night swims too. When I was in Curacao for a uh, field course, we did a combination of a bunch of uh, scuba dives and uh free diving and some of that was uh, at night with the group and oh, uh, fun. you could get you could uh, like free dive just kind of get uh, right up in a corals business and you could see the polyps out and everything oh my god night diving is so fun one of the most magical things I've ever done it was is. night diving in Bermuda during like peak bioluminescence oh, wow. season and you would just move your arms and legs and and stars would explode around you it was wow. crazy it, good it good really now. is I was living out on an island taking a class, um, and they had salt water flushing in their toilets. And one of the like, fun, nerdy things to do was to shut all the lights out in the bathroom and just flush the toilet <laughs> and watch the bioluminescent things swirl around in a circle for a minute. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool. The sparkly toilet water. seen pictures of the peak bioluminescence on some of those beaches in California and uh, just it's 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 pretty magical like in Curacao we weren't quite there during peak bioluminescence but um, there was enough that uh, you know when we were uh, uh, swimming around you could uh, uh, stop and uh, take a look at your wake and you just see these little these little points of light just kind of swirling around behind you. 
I haven't been scuba diving in a long time, though. It's a lot of fun. What's that? Are you on SPL? Let's. No. I was not on SPL. I'll do it oh, okay. 30 meters. Looks like we're heading back down. Yeah, yeah. The the pilots have been uh, off bottom for a bit to do some maneuvers. So we're just standing by while they uh, do what they need to do. So this dive is a 24-hour dive. It started at uh, 12 o'clock our time. So after our shift, we will have another eight hours to go. So you have about eight and a half hours left of diving, if my math is correct. OK. Bridge, this is Nav. Next move bearing 240, 30 meters. Yes, please. As far as I know, I think we have maybe one more dive on this cruise. Yep. Yep, I think they're still figuring out exactly which what that's going to look like, last yeah. I heard. Yeah, um, what we see later in this dive is going to uh, inform what we do next. So, to be determined. Because we are exploring uh, multiple intriguing options and uh, <laughs> we're having a little trouble settling on uh, uh, what exactly we want to do. It's just too much to pick from. <laughs> so uh, we're, we're uh, going to let some of tonight's survey uh, do some of the uh, decision making for us. It's almost within the same, uh, so we're moving with the same contour. Because you're still up, up here. Once we start moving, hopefully you will feel it. And maybe we'll go down for 235 instead of 240 in the next move. Like 5 degrees to, to south. So apparently in the New Zealand altitude diving, they had decompression chambers that they had to go in. Um, that must have been pretty technical decompression diving if they were intentionally going into decompression chambers. Um, mm -hmm. Usually, you don't want to have to go into decompression chambers. Yeah. Yeah, you try to have that uh, a decompression. Uh, no decompression limit. Kind of built into your dive yeah. plan. Like, know how long you can be down at a certain depth. Uh, Know, know the limits of your training too and, uh, and give yourself enough time at the end of the dive uh, to hang out at a depth and just kind of decompress um, as, as the conditions let you. I don't know if anybody knows the answer to this one. Uh, mm -hmm. When was the KG Seamount identified and named? The, the King oh, George. Oh, KG. George. King George. Uh, I was... Not. King um, George Seamount. Yeah, I've been trying to find that info, and I haven't really.
I wonder which King George it's named for. Isn't it a ship? Oh, probably. Is that in the My Copo My or, some, or anything? What's that? I feel like there was one of the documents leading up to the cruise that had like a description of each of the islands in it. Oh, this is Seamount, though. It's not going to be Yeah, it wouldn't be out. Just kidding. There is a free downloadable, downloadable map on our resources page that um, has a okay. map that has the description of all the names, both oh. modern and ancestral. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, that's probably what you're thinking of. But that, yeah, that'd be but the that's, of course, not okay. with the seamounts, yeah. 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 And now, actually, uh, the uh, ancient Hawaiian names for the uh, Northwestern Hawaiian Islands is actually a fairly recent uh, relearning that um, people like Dr. Uh, Keikueva Kikuloi helped um, bring out. And uh, a yeah. lot of it is okay. within stories and songs and uh, different oral histories and then also yeah. Um, yeah. the Hawaiian Kingdom, the population was incredibly literate there. Um, in the I don't think the move is in. I think it was, I hear, 97%. Oh, so there's a lot of information that was taken from oral history and written down. And then since then, it's um, been put in a searchable database, both um, in the original Hawaiian language and I think also translated in English, but so a lot of scholarship cool. is being done kind of for the going through that database. Bridge, this is Nav. Uh, same uh, step, please. Okay. Justin, is there a Hawaiian written language, like a set of symbols, or is it um, the um, the European, like the Phoenician descended symbols, but with Hawaiian language? Um, well, I'm definitely not an expert in Hawaiian language, but to my knowledge, uh, it was an oral language, and then uh, through missionaries coming, it was transferred to a written language I see. as well, and then heavily embraced by the uh, monarchs of the time, the Hawaiian monarchs of the time, and hence the high literacy rates. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm not finding any information on when uh, King George was named. Yeah, I'm finding more just like the geographical basic info. I made a mistake earlier. Uh, the decompression chambers were for the 300 meter deep uh, uh, diving, not the altitude diving. Okay. Also still Apologies very technical. Yes. Decompression diving, yeah. I was a marine biology major in college. I had signed up for scuba lessons. And that same month, we found out that my family has a genetic disorder with our blood vessels. Mm. And oh one no. of the things we're not allowed to do is scuba dive. Oh no. So I was a That's marine a bio major who was <laughs> not allowed to scuba dive. It's a bummer, but thank goodness you figured that out right, before yeah. you did. Right before I did. It, it yeah. just increases the risk of strokes and stuff because we have funny shapes in blood vessels sometimes. So it doesn't really affect my daily life, but it does keep me from scuba diving. I can snorkel, though. That's still pretty cool. Chris has a question yeah, for I'm us. Yeah, I'm seeing that. Uh, yeah. Approximately 40 meters. Yeah, maybe 40 meters below summit right now. Yeah. We're trying to get a lay of the land uh, along the sides here, trying to get a little bit of uh, structural info. Um, and also, we'll be kind of keeping an eye on that as we head up the, uh, the steeper sides past Waypoint 9. And yeah, Chris, most of this dive has been Pretty sparse on bio, much to our surprise. You came in at a good time.
Back row is this line looking good if we are moving the same along with the contour? Um, I think it looks all right. Okay. If you're good, I will make another bridge. This is nav. Another move, same step, please. Oh, that's a dissertation. Okay. Oops. About the C map? Um, about uh, uh, about some of the Cretaceous uh, hotspot volcanoes. I was trying to get some possible info on how long, like some sort of constraint on how long these names have been along, uh, have been around, and uh, found a paper by uh, uh, Malcolm Pringle, who's uh, who's done a lot of good work on uh, Pacific Seamounts, and uh, this is actually his uh, PhD dissertation. <laughs> so, didn't mean to download something that big. Justin's gonna get ya. <laughs> well, yeah, I wasn't paying enough attention to what I was, uh, he's probably asleep. When I was clicking on it. Here's the thing. With most downloads, it could be anyone, but with Malcolm Pringle's PhD dissertation on Cretaceous seamounts, there's only one person on this ship that it could be. <laughs> <laughs> True. Well, two. Well, two. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. I'm just saying the pool of suspicion is, is rather pretty narrow. pretty small, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a question about what percentage of folks are scuba folks on board. Like can scuba dive? Yeah. I've never done it. I'm open water certified, but I've never done it for work. Yeah, I do it for pleasure. Getting to be a NOAA scientific diver is a long That's road. A nice sponge. Um, I do scuba for my research. Uh, I'm a NA US scientific diver and advanced rescue recreational diver. I am open water certified and I got that for a uh, field geology class a number of years ago, but unfortunately I haven't been in the situation where I've used it since. Um, partly that is uh, related to um, vision considerations. Um, I, I need a seeing eye human if I'm in the water without visual correction. So it's like a safety issue. Can you get a, like a corrective lens mask? Everybody asks me that. Um, I see. Why well, I, I retract my question? Yeah, I, re I no, it's it's a good question. It's just uh, I have a very strong and highly customized prescription. Sure. So um, it it would if it was even possible, it would be probably way too expensive. So, sure. Sure. Yeah. It sucks. That's a shame. But, um, but yeah, if I if I decide to go the context route again someday, uh, I could probably do it again. We'll call for another move. Happy? Okay. Bridge, this is now. Another move, same step, please. Yeah, I just haven't bothered with contacts in a very long time. I'd like to get more experience at it and more training so that I can use it in my film work, but I haven't done it yet. That would be seriously cool. I recently, uh, my advisor, Andrew Thurber, um, does a lot of underwater filming and photography on, on the dives we do. Cool. And uh, I recently started trying out a whole bunch of our camera rigs and stuff. And it's a whole different ball game shooting underwater and like trying to do macro and wide and trying not to and trying to light everything properly so that you're not catching the uh like se the sediment or turbidity in the water it's really tough what kind of uh setups do you guys have um we have oh what are they called tg6 the olympus tough cameras with that we throw on um uh, i think they're called backscatter spotlights um or flash onto um 
and then we also have um, just regular GoPros and then also some larger cameras um, that I don't remember the exact model of now. Cool. But you can do a lot with the Olympus Tough. It sounds like a lot to keep thinking about while you're diving too, oh in addition gosh. to the normal like, yeah. dive considerations. It's total task management overload. You gotta be like, the other step has to be dialed before you start bringing that down, yeah. 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 Especially because we always operate it on manual and you're like constantly adjusting everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of those things where it, it it's just gonna take practice to, to get all that nailed down. Yeah. Yeah, just learning how to just get to get all those different thought processes to mesh. Totally. But we always say in scuba diving and science diving, uh, trim over task, which is kind of just like one of the mantras for making sure that you're looking at the way you're positioned and keeping track mm -hmm. on your, uh, track of your, like, you know, the basic things that you should do as a diver, like your air before, yeah. uh, before thinking too hard about the tasks you have at hand. Yeah, air is the most important part, so. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> well, somebody suggested prescriptiondivemasks.com. <laughs> no, nope. it's okay, I was doing them on the halves. Nope, uh, I've already looked into <laughs> it and it's it's not feasible. Oh, bummer. Uh, yeah, no, everybody, everybody's giving me every suggestion under the sun. Yes. It's just, my vision is that bad, so. Mm. Um, but if you got LASIK. <laughs> I'm not. I'm actually not a candidate for LASIK. Oh, it has to be like within a certain oh, parameter. No. My vision is not stable, so. Roger. Yeah. Another move. Nope. I got plenty to Have look you? at here on the surface Bridge, in the meantime. This is not? Sure. Is that a pair of gorge over there in the corner? Another move, step, step, please. Do we keep scuba gear on the ship for maintenance purposes? We do not. No. I think they dry dock, don't they? With dry dock, you don't need scuba. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were saying instead of instead that, we dry of, dock. Yeah. Oh, Raj. Where I we go, we don't I need scuba. I have an agreement scuba. with you. I believe for us, um, one of my colleagues organizes uh, hull inspections before ships come into the monument. Yeah, I was about to say, didn't we have to do a hull inspection? I think we yeah. did. Yeah, and... Uh, never seen it but I was assuming that he's getting in the water and doing yeah. it scuba style mm. or using scuba yeah I was a diver did you see it I well I knew that there was divers in the water because we couldn't do other oh. stuff call we are back into endless manganese crust but we are going back uphill and that whole inspection is we're lateraling along the ridge and then we will go back up yeah. And sure we're not bringing any alien species into the monument. Right. Yeah, that's been a big problem in parts of the Great Lakes where uh, uh, like uh, vessels that enter the, the lake system that also um, uh, uh, do international uh, travel, they uh, it's, it's not uncommon for some ships to have uh, like zebra mussels in their uh, in their uh, uh, bilge tanks, so if they uh, dump bilge in the lakes, uh, you can end up uh, getting zebra mussels coming Excuse along me, with those. Excuse me, did you say zebra mussels? Zebra mussels. Yeah, yes. zebra yeah. mussels. It is a type of mussel. Um, no, oh, like, Roger. Okay, mm -hmm. I. You can imagine what I imagined. They like to grow in big chunks. <laughs> I was like, what, why don't I have zebra mussels in their bilge tanks? I really don't know how they got there. <laughs> <laughs> they fill up pipes and things that are like they just get everywhere. They're they're really uh, a, a big mess to clean up when they interfere with industrial zebras. stuff. Or, Yeah. <laughs> Do you read that all? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You're gonna have the ship start yeah, popping that's up. Yeah, I'm um, So, Levon, on the next uh, ship's move, can we uh, can we take a uh, due west heading for a little bit? West. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, get a little bit more on top of the the ridge again. Sure. Do you want to go straight to west or towards waypoint eight? 
Uh, let's go straight west for a little while, and then we'll okay. start moving uh, southwest again. Sounds good. Yeah. I was hoping to get a little more structural info here, but um, yeah, Chris is right. It's, it's pretty so useless on the east side here. Zero? Roger. 270. Roger. Ready? Do you want us to call us? Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, let's do it. Bridge, this is nav. Uh, next move uh, to west, 270, 30 meters. There was nothing to see here. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, except for that. What's I was hoping for better, but... A couple of Primnoid fans, some tree to Plura. Nothing cray. Kylie, I'm gonna change to 270. Roger. I can't believe we saw another sea dead. The lion, my night is made. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just going back to the technical diving, um, mm. the nice. the oh. science team that um, is within Papanao Mukuakea, they they've really been focusing their efforts uh, using rebreathers mm -hmm. and going the more into the, the twilight zone, the mesophotic zone. Um, oh from around 150 feet to 3, 330, I think is the max NOAA divers are allowed to go. Have they been looking at coral there? Yeah, there's a amazing coral, there's amazing algae, they've, uh, and fish, they've oh, described cool. a bunch of new species. That's awesome. Hey, Suleiman, can you um, please ooh, another uh, blind center lobster. up on the RAVNAV, please? Oh, oh good what? spot yeah. on that. The RAVNAV, so please. Cool. Thank you. You, have you, you've been ROV near vents, don't they look kind of like the Rhymacaris uh, shrimp. Uh, Here, I'll show you. We just called them shrimp last time I was in a hydrothermal area. Rhymacaris oxoculata. Or that something. was one of those cruises where we had more geologists than biologists, so our Exoculata. biologist was running around a lot. <laughs> we, yeah, we kept them pretty busy because none of us they knew. They have like the same sort of wide, they're these like blind shrimp that are at vents. Different, but same so. shape. I don't know if we got good close-ups on them, but it was a while ago, so my memories are a little foggy. They are fascinating. Mm -hmm. I'll bet, I bet those were what we would have seen, because, yeah, in the hydrothermal areas on the bottom. It's just like crawling with them. Yeah, yeah. you get squat lobsters everywhere, uh, yeah. the snails, um, you see shrimp. yeti crabs? Uh, the mm -hmm. big white crabs? Yeah, yeah we the, saw the fuzzy. Of, yeah, we saw we saw a lot of those. Man, I still have to dive at a vent. Okay, I don't know if we saw them that fuzzy, but we did see a lot of crabs. I don't recall if we saw anything quite that fuzzy. Pretty crazy. They like sort of like farm <laughs> uh, bacteria. Oh, so they're like their own garden. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And the uh, Rhymacaris shrimp, they have, um, I want to say, sulfur oxidizing bacteria in their gills. Yeah, that would make sense, um, that kind of environment. We are coming into the last 10 minutes of our watch, believe it or not. Is there anything that we needed to accomplish before we get shifted out? Uh, just make progress. <laughs> we want to see these steep walls, man. Uh, yeah, we've, we've done that. We've uh, just about, we're getting pretty close to waypoint eight out of our 12 planned waypoints. And, wow, that's uh, pretty big. And we'll start uh, heading uh, steeply uphill once uh, we get over to waypoint nine, kind of turn that corner. Did you say after this move we head towards waypoint eight? Um, or we keep west? Wow, I think after our westward move, yeah, let's uh, let's let's go to the southwest, and we'll kind of go along that saddle, like parallel to Waypoint Eight, maybe not directly over it. We're hitting big fans like again. Yeah. On, on top of it or below it? Uh, below it. Okay. Yeah, so we were like just below where things were starting to pick up again. I think. Cool. I had a question about where we dock. That's um, a nice shot. Is it dying or is it predated? So we'll be moving 250. 250. Oh, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Bridge, this is Nav. 
Two five zero thirty meters. Hey please. Christopher, I'm off SPL. Um, I think you're on you're SPL. On SPL. <laughs> <laughs> I hear the other watch start to come in. They're gonna get to see some really interesting stuff here. Hopefully, as uh, the bathymetry uh, starts to change over the next couple hours. That's a big whip down there. Watch. That's really big, yeah. I'm gonna hold off here. For yeah, yeah really guess, should I go up on the thing and perch there? Like yeah. above the fan? I was pretty convinced yeah, we, we were gonna perch. see more structural stuff on this side. Let's perch somewhere. Hmm. Yeah, let's make that way I'm ahead. Um, got a couple questions. Uh, one, where oh. do we where do we dock in Honolulu? Uh, we were docked at the University of Hawaii's docks oh. when we left. I assume that's where we're going to go back to. Yeah. And our next big, big hill. cruise is a uh, um, I think pull up on test out new technology. So we're going to be loading some other kinds of vehicles on the board on board and. Uh, and Fair amount of crew this. changeover. Uh, we should probably yeah, stop the ship in a minute. Um, I can. Justin, maybe you know this one. Bridge, this is Nav. What's that? Hold position, please. And then we'll just let it swing. And we are now holding position. Here, it should be good. Um, Wind, everything being very calm, supportive. You know, I'm not 100% sure what kind of fishing took place in the monument. I know there was the there was briefly oh, wow. a lobster commercial fishing that the populations plummeted and still haven't really recovered. Um, I'm imagining the longline fishing for ahi and fish like that ha maybe crept in there a little bit. Um, uh, but I'm not sure how much bottom fishing happened in there. Hmm. Yeah, you can you can face the wall a little bit and when, then um, yeah, and then kind of lateral and forward. George W. Bush, See ya. when he was president, uh, he used the Antiquities Act to um, designate the monument. In 2006, the uh, commercial mm -hmm. fishing was phased nice. out over five years, so there was definitely some. I just I'm sorry, I don't have more Perfect. details yeah, than that really. That's great. And then just kind of lateral and forward. This is pretty much uh, about the uh, population density and distribution that we've been seeing in a couple of other spots up here. Yeah. So there's a fourth grade class that's just joining us Yay. from Cincinnati. Hey, Hello, folks. fourth graders. How you doing? Hello. Um, they're wondering why we don't see fish and sharks, and because uh, they would be surprised. We have seen a handful of fish today, not a whole lot. If you keep looking, we'll probably see a few more um there aren't a whole whole lot of fish down here we're in a a depth that there's not a whole lot of oxygen and uh so i don't know how that affects the fish they might be up higher closer to the surface or down deeper RV the RV switching out. yep coming up on a watch change here yeah so. but if you uh, look back one of our earlier dives we did see a chimera which is kind of yeah. related to sharks and yeah. rays. Chimera is, is in the shark family. All right, Hello. I um, I am signing off. Have a wonderful rest of the dive. So our watch is switching over here to a new crew. New folks are showing up, taking over where we left off. Um, what we do see down in this area are these things that you're looking at right now. These are corals. Corals are an animal. They don't look like an animal. They look kind of like a tree, but they are um, a group of animals, actually. Um, each coral tree has hundreds and hundreds of little tiny polyps with, with little tentacles and a little mouth, and they are all grabbing little pieces of food out of the water that just float by and uh, pulling them in, and that's how they feed. They make their own hard shell. Uh, their shell is kind of on the inside, and they grow surrounding that, that shell.
sometimes you'll see dead ones that's just like the white sticks that don't have the, the colored coral polyps on them. Oh, looks like a little jellyfish or something just swam by. We also find um, sponges a lot. Sponges are also animals. They're not like the ones that you do your dishes with in the sink, but they are uh, they are living animals. Uh, hopefully we'll see some more of those soon. There's a few different kinds. And uh, I'm going to say farewell for this shift and uh, turn it over to Shelby. Thanks for tuning in, fourth grade. This is so steep. Yeah, look at this rock face here. It's a good climbing wall. I can see a few <laughs> holds right there. Holy, could scale that. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. Uh, not this one, no. There's lots of fans and lots of. No, not not quite like this. No, this is this is special. Wow. Cool. What is that lower middle, sort of brownish yellow? Where are we talking? Hmm. Now it's bottom right. Bottom right. Oh yeah, sure. Yellow brownish. All right, Kylie, you ready for this? Ready. Okay, zoom in, please. <laughs> what on that guy? Yeah, yeah. this guy. Nice job. Yeah. Looks fuzzy a little bit. Black mm -hmm. coral? Yeah, this. Oh. I thought it was that it does look dark. swifty, but it, no, it is not. It does have a very dark skeleton over there. That was fast. Uh, okay, video's out. <laughs> Ciao. You can come wide, please. Uh, come in wide. Ta-da. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to mute myself. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> 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 like chiming in saying that She's is like indeed <laughs> a black coral, but working on ID. Thanks, y'all. Oh, 
trisopathies. Alrighty. Is that what it was identified as? The brown? Yeah, Osico is tuning in with that info. Hey, Lynette, can you zoom out on IPAC, please? I sure can. I think can we can you give me a little zoom in, time. please? This is lovely. Right there, yeah, I just passed the shroud. Thanks. Sure. Okay, thank you. Yep. So for the viewer wondering when we switch watches and if we sort of talk to each other in between about what happened, um, yes, usually. Um, it's always good. The watch that's coming on shows up a couple minutes before it's actually time for us to get started just to sort of touch bases with the person we're switching over with. Um, as far as what we're seeing, we also, depending on the time of day, sometimes are watching what other watches are seeing. So we have an idea when we're going in, but a lot of the times we do sort of touch bases um, about, you know, strategy and speed and what we've been seeing, what we may need to sample, um, what's been going on. So, yeah. Beth? Yeah. The ship is currently holding position. Would you like a ship's move? Give me one second, please. Okay. Lynette, what waypoint are we around or near? We are close to waypoint eight. Okay. So Beth, I'm looking north at this, obviously this pinnacle yep. thing. Um, and the next move is going to be what's that, west? So we keep exploring this pinnacle or we could continue towards the waypoint or whatever you want. But if we want to explore the pinnacle, we do not need a ship move. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Is that Ooh, we fun. could maybe just keep going up? until it kind of flattens out and then yeah, we'll we're start near heading the, near the south, top uh, west southwest roger so yeah let's let's hold steady for a moment here this is beautiful yeah let's come let me Look come back a bit here star on the sponge. what is uh the stuff just below the lasers on the left go ahead zoom in there please the pink yeah what's this stuff Something <coughs> looks like little coral. Type of coral, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Can you go in a little different. tighter, please? Yeah, let's spend a few minutes looking at this because Chris is also asking. Uh, all right, come wide, please. I can see if I can stabilize and then redo that without smashing anything. Sclerotinia. Come full wide what we're getting. Thank you. Can we also, so there's the pink, there's also the white next to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Roger. We and get maybe both porch in light. the frame. Yeah, it's just going to set up for that now. Is that a trade of a sponge? All right. Okay, you can frame them up both there, Rhett. Ugh. Oh man, I cannot stay still. Ugh. I have that problem most days. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think you can come wide, Trevor. All right, thanks. I get like cherry blossom vibes from that little pink coral. Yeah. A little bit. You can come wide, uh, please. Chris Kelly's saying it might be worth collecting. Oh, okay. Oh, boy. The pink Hold one on. or the white one? I'm getting more information right now. I think he's typing. Sounds like it's going to be a scrape and slurp. Yeah, probably. <laughs> How is our slurp situation, Diane? Uh, we've got all our slurps open. Okay. The world is your okay. slurp. The pink one. Yeah. <laughs> Rhett, can you come super duper extra double wide, please? Mm. 
So for our viewers out there, we have scientists ashore that um, are helping us identify um, animals and sponges and things that we see. Chris Kelly is saying the pink one. Hold on. And they sort of let us know if, you know, something is worth sampling so they can find out more information about it, if it's poorly understood or if it's something new. So we are awaiting confirmation from one of our scientists ashore, Chris Kelly. And if so, then I think Trevor said he might try to slurp it. So we'll see if we're actually collecting it. Is it possible to get more light on Atalanta's view? Or to open the iris a little bit? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's tenuous. Ugh. Okay. Standing by on Chris bio Kelly would love to collect that pink one. I told him it would have to be a scrape and slurp and he said yes. So Scrape and slurp by. Scrape and slurp. I might have you operate the pan and tilt from the hydraulics page, please. Okay, I can do that. Oops. Okay, thank you coming out and then going right back in. It's sticky. Okay, what? Can you retract the HD camera? Yes. That's good there. Okay. This is close proximity. All right, you can tilt up, please. Okay. Actually, retract back some more. See how much, how wide we can get this angle here. Wow. It wasn't me, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That was my stomach. Doing that all night. It's your stomach, you say? <laughs> yep. Hmm. Oops, hello. Uh oh. Here we go. Uh. Ah. This is not the best landing spot. Do you want me to prioritize having light everywhere or not blowing out the coral? Uh, this is fine. Okay. For the fourth grade class wondering, this is called a, well, we call it a slurp, is what <laughs> um, is the tool that the, uh, that's in the ROV arm right Can now? Can you zoom in, please? I want to make sure this claw. one on the left is correct. Is that the one we're after? Can I do that? That'll be slightly easier than the one on a frame on the right. The one on the left, yeah, one so it left? looks like there's like either little recruits or they've broken off, so. Okay, I can yeah. try for the one on the left, that should be okay. Okay, super duper extra wide, please. Chris saying yes, one on left is just fine. All right, uh, camera tip down, I want to see that hose again. Actually, I can look at that with bubble. Uh, you yeah. can zoom in on the red line, the deployment quivered spot thing sorry gotcha where i grab it from i think i yes to see i don't pull it out too far so about there in oh, the vehicle. on the red line i know what you mean yeah i don't know what it's called we don't really have a name for that okay is that a good enough view yeah it's good there yeah okay 
Okay, and if you line up this coral on the left with the Zeus there, Ashton, then Red can zoom in. Yes. Let me tilt left a little. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Red, you can zoom in. And I think we can start to slurp now. I don't know, 50%. All right, we are at 50. Oh. Nice, wow. good work. Can we see <laughs> the slurp bucket in channel three, please? Come on, sure. come on. Come on, get there. There yeah. we go. Nice. Can you tilt the camera right, right a little bit, please? Yes. And come out just a bit there, Rhett. Oops, sorry. Good there. Which wow. slurp are we going yeah, what, into? Yeah, slurp one. Thank slurp you. Has hmm. anybody seen anything coming in? No. Not, Not yet. yet. Not yet. Okay, come full super wide. Oh, there's a little piece. Oh, there's a there piece. Yeah, I saw a little piece yeah. in there. Okay. We'll just keep running it. And Great. I see a couple pieces yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. here, we, okay. here nice. it comes. Here it comes. I'm actually going to get out of here before I stow this. It's very smashy around here. Uh, okay. Would you like me to turn up suction at all? Sure. Okay. We're going to go up to uh, just 70. Wow. That is 171. Thank you. Oops. Nice. Well done. Yeah, there's still a lot of that in the hose. So. Oh, another piece just came in. It's slowly yep. coming. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to. A bigger piece came in. Can you stop the flow for a minute? Yes. And we'll restart it in a moment, too. Okay, it's stopped. You can, ah, <laughs> it's a current here. Um, you can start it again. Okay. We're at 60. Well, that might be uh, all we can do there. Yeah, there's a couple pieces floating around in there. Yeah, I think there's more pieces in the hose is all. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll find them eventually. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Okay, I've stopped slurp. Okay, I'll stow this and then we can move on. Okay, do I need cool. to rotate to flush? Sure. Is that forward or reverse from one? It depends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think reverse. I I, oh, yeah, I think reverse. Out. No, forward, I think. I don't know. Just don't know. All right. Great. Great work. Excellent job. Absolutely. All right. Uh, can you get to a couple questions now? I just want to give some focus time to the pilots and back row. Make sure we got that. Um, so we're getting some ID information from our, one of our scientists ashore, Asako Matsumoto. Um, Reminding us that we saw something similar on our dive on Solidae Seamount on the western side of the Lulio Kalani Ridge. All right, right. You can go back to regular zoom status. Thank you. Um, this type of sclerotinian. Solenosmilia variabilis. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, let's see. What is our orientation here? Have we explored the back side of this? Negative. Okay. Ken, what is our tether situation in terms of swinging over on the other side of it? Well, uh, I can go a little ways and then I'll let you know when I can't. But it's we got some scope for sure. Okay. And uh, how does the current feel down here to you, Trevor? Uh, you saw when I was trying to pull that hose in and out, in yeah. and out? And the way I was drifting was to the right, I guess. Okay. So that at the time was 
uh, slightly towards the east. Yeah. That was the, what was happening there. Oh, these slurp jars are not wanting to yeah, move nope. very easily, are they? There we go. Can we get a partial zoom on this little mm -hmm. pin cushion looking thing next to the uh, coral? Okay, Rhett, you can go in there. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Oh. Urchin? Yeah, I see urchin. Justin was telling me that they saw all different types of urchins mm, okay. earlier. You can come wine. Thank you. Thanks. So I know we just collected a sample, and a viewer was actually wondering, they saw it in the wet lab, sort of uh, that PVC structure with plastic on it, was wondering what you all use that for. That is, do you mind if I answer that? Go for it. Um, so those two structures are for the microbial work um, that Beth and I do, and the purpose of the, the shrouds, um, mm -hmm. which is what we call them, are to, I guess the first purpose is to limit airflow um, throughout the whole lab, and that's mm -hmm. because we work with bacteria and microbes, and there are microbes everywhere um, and all over our bodies in the air, and so we try and... Can we get a partial on the sea star eating the coral? Limit any contamination. Mm -hmm. And then the second reason is that uh, we crush rock in that shroud, and so to limit the amount of mess and also possibility of like rocks flying everywhere and into places that they shouldn't be we put the shroud up so those are the the two reasons for those mm -hmm. pvc structures hey, zoom in on those. do you all ever please. change out the oh, plastic yeah. if it gets damaged or anything or is it pretty much pretty sturdy and um, stays good and sealed Ooh, look at this um trevor question oh. Oh. back to your answer do you think it's possible to come over this so this that we can see the sea star from the other side? See what I can do. Come wide, please. And can we get the iris up a little bit on her? Thanks. Um, really quickly, Shelby, we haven't changed the shroud um, mm -hmm. because we're all, I think we're only out here for like three weeks, so we wouldn't we wouldn't need to. But gotcha. yeah, that's a good question. And uh, it's not up now, but if you were to look at the wet lab. At this moment, the shroud was not in there uh, in the middle of the room because we have relocated it outside over the rock saw because uh, we wanted to limit spray from the rock saw onto the deck. So it has multiple functions depending on what we're trying to do. We probably won't bring it back in now. <laughs> and it's coated down in a little bit in Delta, please. rock dust. Coming down. For the fourth graders in Cincinnati, thanks for joining us. Uh, wondering why they don't see fish and sharks. Um, there are both fish and sharks um, down at these depths. Um, they may not be as abundant as you might think, like in shallower waters. And porch light on, please. And Rhett, you can zoom. And really thick coral reefs, but they are here, deep sea versions of fish. Um, the teacher, if you're there, um, you can go to knowledgelive.org and there's a highlight about a chanacops, which is um, a deep sea anglerfish that we've seen somewhat often. Um, yeah. So they may not be familiar with that type of fish, you know, um, if you want to show them that. Sea star has really eaten a mm -hmm. lot of the coral there on the left. Is this In black coral? I don't know. Is it possible to come down an altitude any bit so we can kind of look up up into it? See if it's... It's interesting that it looks like it's almost eating down the coral as opposed to like up with the bamboo. Yeah. Or like when like when we see eating bamboo coral. I just love when they're like wrapped. It's just so <laughs> interesting. Um, but yeah, so... Um, is that our closest zoom, Rhett? No, I can go further. Yeah. Uh. 
Wow. Cool. Huh. Very neat. Thank you nice very work. much. All right, come on, please. Nice That's work. Awesome. I feel um, like I'm still kind of scarred from the sea star yesterday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a little bit. The nine-legged. <laughs> that was. So to answer your question, Shelby, this is not a black coral. This okay. is a primnoid. Oh. We saw a, a, a smaller version on our dive, or our watch earlier today. Oh. Calyptrophora. Beth, were you interested in EDNA oh, yeah, here? Oh, yeah, that's right. Or Thank you for the reminder. Yeah. EDNA. Yeah, we want to get an EDNA. How about right here? Yeah, it looks like the current's coming right at us. Perfect. Um, so hopefully we get some environmental DNA Niskin? from all these Niskin corals. Niskin 3, sure. please. That's going to be Niskin 3. Cool. And Go ahead. while we're... All right. Oh, yeah, never mind. Go ahead. A little, a little bounce room. OK. So lovely shot in channel two of the view of Herc over this mound uh, as seen from ROV Atalanta up above. Locked for this, it stays closed the whole time. Okay, we'll do. So my camera's retracted. And which which one are we going for? Three. Three. Okay, I'll follow you over there. Okay. So you saw how I was doing that? I was kind of looping the fingers in and pulling. I'm not grabbing it at all. I'm just trying to hook the yeah hooky fingers. Just hook and hooky fingers. feel for where my limbs are. There we go. <laughs> so for our notes for this water blue. sample, we are in blue. a vicinity with lots of these primnoids, Cliptrophora, um, Plexaurids, the yellow ones, and Sclerotinians. And we'll watch the Niskin camera and tell you when you pulled it. Okay, thank you. So for viewers, um, you've been hearing eDNA and environmental DNA, and that's what we're doing right now, taking an environmental DNA Jaw sample. rotate is a good way to get, uh, get it looped around. Oh, okay. Get a finger through but not hooked. You can kind of catch it on itself. Oh, good idea. Okay, almost there. Yeah, this is your time. first Niskin, Ashton? This is my first Niskin. Yay. Yeah, nice, nice. Keep that up. There you go. All right. And it's good. You got it. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Oh, Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Nice job. So, <laughs> Ashton just pulled her first Niskin sample, um, and that's what we use to collect uh, water in areas that are high density like this, environmental DNA. Um, Water samples are a great, great way to assess um, biological diversity in an area without actually having to collect an animal. Um, and I feel like it's been more and more used in the last couple of years, um, becoming um, a very interested, interesting way to assess biological diversity in the water and has been used in a lot of science. Um, I definitely think it's been growing. And um, That's yeah. Good there. Okay, thank you. That's what's been going on. Shout out to Ashton for the first Niskin. Yay. Whoop, whoop. Nice. Thank you. Ooh. Nice job. Nice job, everyone, on that wall. It's a um, very eventful start to our, <laughs> to our watch. It's yeah. great. And yeah. I think <laughs> cool our scientists start. are sure very excited about the coral that we collected and therefore the eDNA sample great. also to work with some of these species. Awesome. Thanks, yeah, Trevor. Good job. Mm. Okay, can you kill porch light? And then now, what do you want to do, Beth? Can we come up just a few meters and do our pan right and left just to get see what's going on? All right. It's hard for me to tell an Atalanta view. We might need to turn up the iris just a little bit. It's a sheer drop off that way. 
and a sheer drop off to the right. We are on the top of the world. Atalanta's iris is wide open, by the way. Okay. Dang. It looks like it uh, just left of the lasers keeps going up. Yeah. So that's looking... Oops. Yeah, we could follow that over if you want. Um, so this is like a little pinnacle. Let me back up a minute here. And but yeah, I think that straight ahead is our next cliff wall. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd like to keep going up on this feature that okay. we kind of skirted around the side of. There's also something up to the right of us, just out of screen. I can see it in sonar about 40 meters away, and it looks like a big cliff wall as well. Yeah. Yeah, but we yeah. don't need to necessarily go back east, um, yeah, Roger. which is what the direction of that. So uh, The direction would be north for that cliff wall. True, yes. Um, Either way, yeah. Here's the pinnacle, and we can keep going towards the cliff in front of it due west. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Look at all the animals on this. I know. Top. And it's just cool. Okay, you it's ready really for a move? Cool. I'm ready Hold for a move, yeah. Right. Let's do short moves. Okay. It's like bridge, nav. Can we move three zero meters bearing two nine zero, please? Thank you. This, uh, this little cupped in area is, I'm pretty sure, where we took the little coral sample. Yeah, just at the bottom right hand of the frame. Mm -hmm. You can see him still there, right there. Mm -hmm. This is denser than it was the whole last watch. It's just starting to pick up. Oh, really? Awesome. You're making us feel so good, Brett. Yeah. <laughs> you saved it for us. <laughs> So for the viewer wondering who's driving this ship while well, we're we're in here, well, we um, are not ship drivers. <laughs> we have um, a captain as well as a deck crew that are trained in how to steer the ship, and they have watches just like we do. So everyone on board, EV Nautilus, has their uh, you know niche and job, and so the deck crew um, and the captain work out their schedule with when and who steers the ship um, and whoever is on watch that is who Lynette Trevor? communicates Hello. with. Uh, while we're getting set up for the ship's move, Ooh, can that? we get a closer Squat zoom lobster. on some of the yellow uh, corals please? Yeah. Squat totally. lobster swimming? Squat lobster swimming <gasps> through the middle of the frame. Oh my gosh. We can also look at that for a moment. Can you come down and delve please? Yes. Coming down. This is like oh, our lucky dive. Yeah, we've this seen a lot of animals swimming. You can this swim on a squat lobster, fantastic. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, this is the know. best thing ever. What? <laughs> I just want to cry. <laughs> is this your new favorite animal? Oh, my gosh. It's my new favorite animal swimming, at what? least. What is it using to swim? Is that's that his tail. His tail. Ah, this it's, is amazing. Yeah, that's how lobsters swim. I have, I've never seen that. It's very exciting. <laughs> Thank you for. I mean, all oh of their gosh. legs are back. All right, thanks, lobster. That makes me so giddy. Or forward. That's why. And then it those things. That's where all their muscles are. Yeah, that makes sense. I just oh, had not hey, thought about it. Here's a geo did a day. There right is at the top a geo did a day. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we've nice seen spot. that yet on this no. dive. No. Also known as beer sponge. <laughs> or fuzzy hat. <laughs> or fuzzy hat. I did not think we were going to see two squat lobsters swimming <laughs> in the same, like, 24-hour period. That was very lucky. That's too much. Especially since we haven't even seen them, the like, whole, this whole The whole time, trip. they've just been chilling, you know? Yeah, okay, so right, you can zoom on the yellow. Perfect. Pretty far away. I'll do my best here. I can go tighter if you want. Up to Beth. Uh, this is good for right now while we're letting our scientists ashore get a sense of the situation. Right on. Is that a dead sponge there at the bottom middle behind the fan? What is that? I don't know. Hold on one second. Maybe a dead encrusting sponge or a, I don't know. Hmm. I can't quite get over there, but. Uh, okay, can we get a closer zoom on the yellow? Yeah, come wide, please. Polyps?
Okay, you can zoom in there. Yeah, so we're thinking that this is a Acanthagorgia. Yeah, bright yellow. Oh, that's Very a pretty nice, happy, sunny look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, I was just saying. Very much so. Um, Sorry about the focus there. I'm and then there's it. this lighter, like so tan brown, smaller uh, corals in the background. Like back here. There's another one just to our left. Yeah, perfect. I think you gotta mm. look at those. Oh. Oh, those are looking more like a hydrozoan. All right, come wide, please. Way far away. Mm. Uh, let me get back to a normal spot to be at, and then we can look for those <coughs> things again. Atlanta's just right on top of the peak. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll see them again. Mm-hmm. Do you want to pause here on a ship's move? Uh, I'm good for another, if you want to keep moving, Beth, or we can take it really slow. Up to you. We can keep going. Yep. Okay. We'll just spend a little bit more time here, and then we'll... Were these little ones? Bridge, nav. The ones you were talking about? Uh, they they kind of look can like this. Can we take another step? Tell from this distance? Three zero meters, two nine zero, please. Thank you. Okay, Rhett, you can zoom in, please. Whoa. Yeah, very similar. Okay, These are thank really you. small polyps. I think they're hydrozoan. Okay, yeah, let's keep moving. Sometimes it's hard to want to both see the trees and the forest at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, That's I'm going to take an opportunity here to take a wrap out. Okay. Nice. Close your eyes, everybody. If you don't like no, motion. No, I like this part. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fun. <laughs> Can you come up on Delta, please? Yes. 18 to 20. Can you do that? Just like to take a moment and reflect on how amazing it is that we're on this ship in the middle of the ocean yeah. <laughs> and we're connecting with scientists literally around the world in almost near real time to collectively identify organisms at the bottom of the ocean. Is this the most remote live broadcast that happens? Um, it's got to be close. Well, I don't know. What, what is the distance? of uh, orbit <laughs> from I think it's the sea surprisingly surface. small. Space is yeah. 50 miles away. I think the ISS is like 100, something okay. like that. Low Earth orbit's yeah. pretty close. I wanted okay. to say 140, 45 kilometers. Okay. I think the Mars rover might be the closest oh, competition. True. Well, that's not live. That's like a, there's oh. speed of light delay. Well, <laughs> well that's, there's always a speed of light delay. Okay, yeah. you can come back down and Delta, please. Down. Guys, I have to get this out of my head. Please do. <sighs> Been spending most my life swimming in a squatty paradise. I didn't know you were going to sing. Portland. That's not what I was expecting. <laughs> 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 I did not know that we were going to get a song. I'm so Just happy. Been going did. through my head ever since we saw the little guy swim by. <laughs> <laughs> squatty paradise. I like it. Squatty paradise. This is squatty huh. paradise. Are we, uh, is sure the porch light still on? <laughs> uh, very well might be. Nope. <laughs> She's I think we brought up Iris when we were looking around. No, yeah. Look at this big nobulus. Column. Yeah. Column is what I meant. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is cool. This is so cool. Yeah, the structure is wild. So for the viewer, um, I know we saw a sea star a while ago. Overhang. Chomping. Um, and you were wondering how come we don't usually see sea stars eating. Well, that's what they're doing when you when we zoom in on those sea stars and they're sort of wrapped 
um, around these corals, um, they are consuming the polyps um, as food. Um, so that's what that is every time we sort of Hey Beth, do you in. want to stay on this cliff or keep moving? We can keep moving. Okay. Let's, yeah, we can head um, southwest. Roger that. Okay. And they do that by literally their stomachs come out of their bodies um, and to sort of, you know, wrap around whatever prey that they are trying to eat. Bridge nav. What's that trade of plura? Can we move three there? zero meters bearing two four zero, please? Thank you. And they secrete really, really, really strong digestive enzymes that help break down the prey like in their own body. Mm. And then they suck the nutrients. That's so cool. Um, hold on one second. Trevor, hold on. can you back up just a tiny bit yep. so we can get the orientation of these rocks? It looks like a feature that is like broken off and that these yeah, are intrusive sure. rocks. Okay, uh, I'm not sure what I'm trying to align with. Just like this top left edge, perhaps? See how the rocks kind of look like they're orienting like this? Yeah, I can line up for that, no problem. <coughs> how does that feel? I like that. That's almost south. Almost south. Yeah, 190-ish. Plus minus 10 degrees. Uh, yeah, okay. And they seem to be a little tilted too. Okay. Yeah, I can get a side view and then you can yeah. put a protractor on your computer screen. Can we get some stills, please? <laughs> Do you want me to kill lasers? Or we want lasers. Lasers are fine. Okay. All right. Lasers I think are helpful. Just a little micro peak. I think I'm going to top out any second here. Yeah. Okay, I'm perpendicular to it now. Um, and my roll is 0 0.5 degrees, so 0, yeah. It's not super steep angle, but it is an angle. Yeah, okay. Thank anyway, you. We can keep moving. Let's top out on this thing. Sure. Uh, Follow-up question. Is there a reason the sea star is eating the top of the coral versus the bottom? I think it just depends on what side cool. it starts chomping, and it just sort of makes its way. Um, so some we find sort of at the bottom of a coral and the part that's under them is sort of clean, like corner of the cob, like if they've been going from, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> if they've been going from bottom to top. Um, <laughs> um, that's a good <laughs> like analogy. Clean like corner of the cob. <laughs> that's what it, at least on the bamboos, that's kitchen. what it looks like. <laughs> the kitchen's clean like corn on the cob. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, um, today, but like it depends on sort of what side they start on. Hat, sponge. <coughs> but they. That would make sense that this little pinnacle, if it's an intrusive rock, that it hasn't fallen over, because sometimes they can be a bit more sturdy than extrusives. Uh -oh. But they kind of crawl over. They don't hop, as I learned. What is. Intrusive versus extrusive. Is that what you said, Beth? It is what I said, Lynette. Um, so when you get these lava injections into these underwater volcanoes, when the lava comes out into the seawater, that's extrusive. It's okay. extruding. Um, and that's when you get these like pillow formations. You can also get sheet flows. Um, intrusive is when the rock doesn't actually make it all the way out into the water. It kind of is in the, the lava magma is emplaced within the rock and then it slowly cools inside. Oh, uh, okay. That's when you get those columnar uh, basalt formations. In the reset, fish please. going through the Atlantic cam. Thank you. Yep. Hey Beth, when's our next dive? We're going to be up at noon. Uh, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Thanks. You're getting kudos from our scientists ashore for that explanation of geology. Yeah. Beth? Do what I can with that geology minor I have. <laughs> That's impressive at like 3.34 and then what time is it? <laughs> <laughs> what time Where are we? Is it? Where are we? It's Where right now. <laughs> what, what planet are we on? It's current. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 
man. <laughs> it's future now. It's, it's future, the future now. now. <laughs> Excellent. All right. You want to keep the ship moving? Yes, please. All right. Yeah, this is a really beautiful spot, but we have a lot of ground we want to cover. I was going to say, ships. I think I could just stay Bridge right now and explore all yeah. of this. Mm -hmm. but yeah, with our wonderful magnifying lens here. Well, Let's look at every coal. Can we have another Let's step three zero everyone. meters, two four zero, please? Thank you. I love these tiny little mm -hmm. lumps, little micro hills. Can we get a partial on this yellower one? Yeah. You know it. I like the micro hills too. There's so many things tucked in here. They're all cozied up in the rock. Okay, Rhett, you can zoom in there. It's uh he's working there on it. There it goes. Thing. Okay. It was giving me a little delay. Roger. Let's see if I can get a little better. too many pieces of paper on my desk here. So for our fourth Thanks, graders. Come okay, come out halfway. Yep. And yeah, good there. Stay there a sec. Just for fun. New yeah, Richmond, I was Ohio. Say, I thought that was an elapse. So Mia, yeah, hexacoral. Thank All right, you. thanks. Some of these might take a moment to focus on because there's a delay, so I have to anticipate where the... <laughs> Roger, you can come wide, please. <laughs> yeah, it's too bad uh, Ryan's not on shift. He'd be loving all these hard corals we're seeing. <laughs> oh. Hopefully they continue for his watch. Let's wake him up. <laughs> Somebody go knock on his door. <laughs> so we got a flat spot here, but the cliff is definitely going to look left here. The cliff is definitely off to the left. It's a pretty sharp drop off there. Yeah, and that's the direction we're going to be heading. Uh, that's south. Oh, okay. I see your swing now. Yeah, we're going to be paralleling it. Okay. Ish. Yeah, we can maybe keep it in our in our left pocket as yep. we're moving. <laughs> now look this way a minute just to see what's going on. It looks more slopey here. Yeah. Yeah, a lot less. Now, and now that you're up here, where how do you feel the current? Uh, let me stop doing drastic maneuvers and I'll tell you <laughs> it's left to right left to right well your heading is currently southwest mm -hmm. so it's coming from the south east to the northwest yeah but it might be coming from the south even okay well that that matches the orientation of these large bands. Yeah. Yeah, maybe coming from the south. Okay, thanks. We can keep going. All right, for the fourth grade class in New Richmond, Ohio, wondering some of the different jobs in the control van. Um, so there is a video engineer right now. We have Rhett in the front. Um, there are the ROV pilots. There's one for Hercules, who is Trevor. And there's one for at Atlanta, uh, which is the RV you can't necessarily see, but if you look in satellite feed two, um, it's how we're getting these great shots of Hercules. Um, Atlanta's hovering above Hercules, and that's Ashton, our Atlanta pilot. Uh, Lynette is our navigator. Um, if you have been listening, um, she's been doing our ship moves. She'll say bridge nav a lot. That's who that is. Over there. We're going to call in one right now. <laughs> yeah, she helps listen. us get to where bridge we're Bridge nav. <laughs> there it goes. Can we have another step three zero meters, two four zero, please? Thank you. Perfect timing. Thanks, Annette. <laughs> um, and then in the back row, you'll hear the pilot sometimes say back row. Um, all the way, oh, well, we're not on the feed, but in the back where we have <laughs> our, <laughs> the data logger, there's always a data logger um, who's on the science team, that's Diane. Rhett, can you put on the uh, camera showing Howdy. the back row? Yeah. <laughs> woo woo, back row. <laughs> um, and then there's always a watch leader, that's Beth, who's also one of the lead scientists uh, for this expedition. 
Um, we have Annabelle, who's also on the science team, and she is uh, came on this expedition with Beth. And you have a science communication person. Um, usually it's a lead. Um, if you have been listening, Megan Cook sometimes comes on, um, or it's a science communication fellow, which is what I am. And yeah. Yeah, that's our intrepid Shelby. That's our makeup in here. And there's always someone. Um, sometimes can we, we get switch a out. on this while we're waiting? For the yes, we off? can. Sometimes we switch out uh, for like dinner or if someone has something to do. So sometimes someone will take over for me if I have interactions to do or something like that, which are just um, when okay, I zoom talk in, to different groups. But yeah, lots of things. And then um, if the fourth graders are wondering, there's even more roles on the ship, not just in the control van. So there, we talked earlier about who drives the ship, so that's the captain, um, and then there's the deck crew who helps drive, but also... Thanks. Come wide. Helps take care of the ship. They're very skilled in how to fix things on the ship. There's the galley team, uh, who are the wonderful people who cook all of our meals. There are um, our mapping team, so it was pretty much always mapping. Um, who else? Am I missing anybody? You got double dip there. <laughs> Two shout outs. I know. <laughs> yes, Lynette is also on our mapping team. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Lots of different ways to work on and with ocean science things. And a lot of different people that are very important to make an expedition successful. So just getting some info from our scientists is sure to pass on some info. Um, that last zoom was a trisopathies, and then the previous small yellow coral um, that we've been interested in um, a few moments I think, back. I think there's one right here. If we want to get a partial right there, there's a white one and a yellow one, I think. Roger. I'm going to butcher the science name, you guys, but or scientific name. The science name. The science name. Analopsomia rostrata. The yellow is a different morph called Amphiloides. Okay, you can go in slow there, Rhett. These names <laughs> are um, so long. <laughs> too. And that is because... Nice shot. A lot of things here. It mm. lacks the rostrum over the calyx. Mm. Is that That's a net? Can you Chris zoom in tighter? Kelly. There is, yeah. It is a net. Marine That's debris. debris, yeah. Come wide, please. Just going to look around for more. Is it a crack or a rope? That's a crack. That's a crack, yes. <sighs> we, we do right. need to always be cautious, making sure we're not going to go into any lines here. OK. Seems safe. Just one random net. Weird. Um, can we look left, sorry, can we pan left and get a closer look at that sponge? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to mess your focus up because I'm still getting closer. It's okay. But that's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Interesting. Is this a sponge? Yep. Yes. Sponge okay. With a hydrozoan and a squat lobster. Looks like it's missing a little piece there in the middle. It's so interesting. It's like dark brown and like. Um, we're getting a request to maybe collect some of this sponge. Is that possible, Trevor? Yeah. Can we hold on the ship's yep. move? Come wide, please, Rhett. Bridge nav. Uh, to our scientists ashore. Can we hold position, please? Can we slurp this? Thank well, you. normally I'd recommend slurping, but there is definitely going to be some of those corals in there. So it might get even more plugged. So we can try that, or we can do the snip and stow in the starboard side. Do we have space to put it on top of something? We could put it on top of a rock. And we do have one small. Yeah, we want to hold that. Yeah, that's what I thought. What's the verdict? Or it's still decided? Yeah, well still we can cut. chatting. 
SNP and we'll put in starboard. We were just chatting on okay. where. Roger that. Porch light on, please. Porch light. I think um, it might have to be we'll pretty. Probably want to try to get a piece of the healthier looking part. The wider okay, part. Okay, I was wondering. <laughs> Roger. It's like it looks like it's ailing. <laughs> <laughs> ailing could be our new bingo word. <laughs> but ailing right there on the bingo card. That and flying squat lobster, swimming squat lobster goes on the bingo card now. Ugh. Ooh. Eee. Hey now. Easy does it. Thanks for tuning in, Miss Fletcher's biology class. Glad you're here. Okay. I don't have unlimited time here, so we'll yep. be speedy with this. Can I get bubble on craft, please? Yes. And you can <laughs> you can switch the uh, starboard camera. Is getting to starboard. All right. Swapping over. It's hard for me to identify what kind of sponge this might be with the encrustation on this. Chris Kelly saying Can I just take a, a grab a mitt full here? That's what I was wondering. Is that okay? Okay. Okay, we're going <laughs> for Delta. Took a squatty. Okay. Do we get a, some interest to that? Do you want me to try to rotate this camera around? No. Okay. Okay, where am I going with it? And Delta. You can open the box. Starboard Delta. Okay. So for folks who were wondering earlier about some of the sort of parts that are on the arms of the ROV, we saw the slurp being used earlier, so that is what that's called. Uh, this particular arm is called the predator arm, and those are coral cutters. Um, that are attached and super helpful for things like this or sometimes um, we slurp that other coral but sometimes we can also cut them with the coral cutter so that's just another appendage that's on Herc. Come on. Sticky sponge. Come on, actually go in the box please. There you go. Oh, a little bit. A little bit left. Come on, go in there. All right, close the box, please. Close Pandora's box, and I gotta go. Thanks, front row. Nice. Well done. We Very could nice. Put that ship's move back in, Lynette. When uh, stand by. Ready. Yeah. I, uh, that was. <laughs> I had about 30 seconds left. <laughs> Whew. All right, you can give me front porch, please. Okay. All right, you ready, Trevor? Uh, stand by. Yep. Let me get oriented here. Turn on my thruster. And where are we going? Um, 240 or so? 250? 250. 250. Yeah, we can do a ship move now. Thanks. Okay. Yep. Bridge nav. This is a cool shot of her coming down slope. Ooh, yeah, it Can is. we move three zero meters to five zero, please? Thank you. So cool. We never get that shot. That's awesome. It's like you're skiing. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get some uh, frame grabs of that? Mm -hmm. I got Thanks. some. Yeah. Why don't we look like at the fish? fish coming into yeah. view. Oh, fish. Rat tail. Is it a rat tail? It looks a like a chimera from this Whoa. angle. Are our fourth graders still here? <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> oh, man. Got a fourth fish. grade, look at your fish right now. <laughs> if you're at recess, come back. <laughs> That's Whoa. how big he is. Those lasers is are 10 chimera. centimeters apart. Oh, he is big. Oh. 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 oh, hello. Oh, oh, oh all right, goodbye. Bonk. Oh, 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 oh. Here, he is here we go. Did not like that. <laughs> He ran into Herc. <laughs> Do we want to call that an attack? <laughs> I don't think that counts. I think that was like, oh, not that way. <laughs> Chimera hurt himself in his computer. <laughs> Except not really. He's fine. But. Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> All right, I got to go the right way now.
Okay, that's better. We are back on track. Here's an interesting question. Do you work with planetary scientists who are studying other planets using the ocean floor as an analog? Yes. Yes. We do? <gasps> yes. <laughs> Tell good. us more. Tell us more. <laughs> I didn't know. Uh, yeah, well, um, uh, not a so a few years back, uh, OET was part of a large team called Subsea. Oh. Where the team was testing out Roger. latency mm -hmm. as part of operations, right? So, uh, latency referring to like a time delay mm -hmm. between what's happening and a uh, team viewing what's happening and sending commands, mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, with rovers that are being controlled, as we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, testing that for an exploration type capability where you're in an ocean setting mm -hmm. um, and that was done at the inner space center where the scientists would come to the inner space center at the university of rhode island where the ocean exploration trust is based um, and then be working with a team on board nautilus to explore i believe some underwater hydrothermal systems uh, maybe on the axial volcano maybe mid cayman rise i can't remember exactly where they were doing their work um, and um, some of the vehicles that are going to be tested on an upcoming ocean technology leg. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the motivation for those vehicles, uh, especially a vehicle called Nui, uh, which is near it under ice. It's a Ooh. remotely operated vehicle that's designed specifically to operate in under ice settings. Can you zoom in on the cute squishy thing? <laughs> What's that vehicle called, Beth? Cute, squishy. Nui. Look how fast it's Nui. going. N-U-I. It's an acronym for <laughs> Nereid Under Ice. Is Nereid an acronym? And I believe Nereid is also an acronym. <laughs> yeah, an acronym with an acronym. <laughs> uh, acronym with an acronym. Right, I love embedded acronyms. Yeah. Scientists are really good at that. Um, <laughs> That's getting ugly. Yeah. Um, some of the work that... I am funded to do not on this expedition, but tangential to this expedition is testing out methods for detecting life in low, very small quantities, mm -hmm. microbial life in very small quantities, um, to try to improve our limits of detection for uh, trying to examine if there's life on other planets. So yeah, there is some in crossover, and also one of our pilots in training is an engineer from the Jet Propulsion Lab uh, in California, who is also part of teams that are thinking about how to explore under ice oceans. Mm. That is interesting. I had heard about subsea, but I was always wondering what it was. That's cool. Yeah, I wasn't part of that, but some of my colleagues, uh, Chris German and Julie Huber, mm. were part of that team. And me. And Trevor. Oh, cool. That is awesome. That is awesome. I really didn't know that. That's amazing. Love that crossover. Paul is working. Paul's the, the guy working for JPL. He's working on um, autonomous vehicles to go. Uh, they're almost passive, but not quite. They have a little control, and they go underneath um, ice sheets. Yeah. You're right to now. Crawl cool. underneath the ice. Yeah, that's a neat one. We also work Can with we the get rock a partial zoom on this forehead here? Yeah. We also work with the rock drill grabber thing, mm. meant to grab onto sheer cliff faces and do the core sampling. Oh. So we attach to the manip and try to grab onto sheer rock faces. They didn't have the core drill part installed, but starting somewhere. Wow, that's all very cool. So at the beginning of this dive, we were seeing all those dead forayeds. Um, They're much smaller. <laughs> yeah, like hours and hours ago, 12 hours ago. OK, you can zoom in on that, please. Well, 
yeah, it's nice to actually see it alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As Diane was referring to. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how many squat lobsters. Five in this oh. frame? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Six. One, six? Two. I see six. Four, oh, five. yeah. Oh, that one is hidden by my monitor. Right. Now seven. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Come wide, please. Here. Thank you. Squat lobster city. Uh, now, every time I see one, I just want one to just take off. <laughs> 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 Cute swimmers. <laughs> Yeah, living in, uh, I live in Maine currently. Uh -huh. I'm not from Maine. And so the very first time I saw a lobster swimming, I was just like, whoa, <laughs> that's not what I thought was going to happen. Like, I just didn't, I didn't think that's how it worked. <laughs> it makes sense once you see it. But. Now, I'm pretty sure squat lobsters are not lobsters. Correct. There is, there is something else. They have a similar locomotion style. Oh, but just There's still in the crustacean family. A lot of convergent evolution amongst crustaceans. Tell us more, Rhett. Uh, <laughs> well, many different um, lineages uh, have evolved to essentially fit the crab form to to the point that Can there's a term a for it. Can we get a on this when we get up yep. here? Called carcinization, which is the tendency to become a crab. Huh. huh. I love that there's a word for that. I know. <laughs> uh, wait, repeat it. What's the Carcinization. Term? Carcinization. The can tendency to become a crab. Is that, can that be applied, like, emotionally? I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hanger. It's carcinization. <laughs> but uh, lots and lots of, of different lineages, like, I, I don't want to say the exact number because I don't remember offhand, but uh, of crustaceans have basically been funneled towards the form of like like picture a blue crab and it's some variant of that um but they're actually quite distantly related to each other uh mm. phylogenetically that is cool that's and how that. snowboarding was invented <laughs> and skiing and they're like we could move sideways instead <laughs> <laughs> carcinization well played bridge nav So this looks like a much healthier version. Can we have another step, sampled. three zero meters, two three five. And now you can actually see the stalk underneath. Thank you. And how it connects to what we were. Yeah. Oh dead yeah. Ones we've been seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think those are the dead stalks that we've been seeing? Okay, Is right. You can zoom in there. This period, maybe. Working on it. I know you're trying. There's a dead oh. stock. Speaking of dead stock. Oh, cool. Yeah. Can we make sure to get a still cam a view of this shot too? Getting lots of them. Great. Wow, that top, the head part is looks very healthy. Wow. Yeah. Lots Interesting of structure stuff, too. It looks like modern art. <laughs> totally. Mm -hmm. It definitely it's could be in somebody's house. Like. <laughs> yeah. It's a modern art chair, a lounger. Yeah, it's That's ergonomic. That's what I said the other day. <laughs> people said they wouldn't want to sit in it because it's going to be sharp. <laughs> but we, when we you stand see by a that. modern art chair, then it's okay for it to be sharp. <laughs> a lot of modern art is meant to be looked at. Yeah. Not really. Okay, I should have added that when I said it a few days ago. <laughs> you kind of just, it's just there to be. Seems like a low energy massage um, chair to me. You just kind of wiggle the around. I think it's some weird, sort of weird audio attachment. file gramophone thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. Sure. Is. Like How do you spell for it? Is it P or F? F, F A R R E. -I, no, no I would like to listen to music through that. Darn <laughs> English wild. language. It could be English. What's Thanks. the rock word moving. again? Starts with a B. B, B what about what? what? Bot Botryoidal. It's a botryoidal <laughs> gramophone. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All right. Thanks, Rhett. So Chris Kelly is thinking that is similar to what uh, possibly same as what we collected. Let me give you some names. Let me butcher some more scientific <laughs> science <laughs> names. You're doing great. Uh, hold on, now I lost it in the feed. Where did it go? Red aspidoscopula. Thank you for that. You're welcome, everyone. You got to listen to Beth. <laughs>